Hello, everyone. Okay, so um, thanks for joining us. We've got Judy Parker here. Um, we're going to be doing some mermaid painting. Um, before we got get started, I just wanted to thank Inkjet Stencils and Cheyenne Tattoo Equipment. Um, both of them are sponsoring and making this awesome event available for you guys. Um, if you want to head over to tattooeducation.com slash giveaway, um, there's still a giveaway going on right now for um, a Cheyenne machine and grip. So that's pretty epic. That's tattooeducation.com slash giveaway. And uh, I'm just going to give you a little heads up for this week's events coming up because there's a lot. Um, <clears throat> so uh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Jake Meeks is going to be doing a Monday morning uh, drawing group again. Um, on at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday, um, Needle Jig Mark, Mark from Needle Jig is going to be doing a talk with Renee Little um, about tattoos, paint nights, and color saturation. Um, and then a members only one that night is going on, and that's going to be uh, Elemental Flow number four, Atmospheric Turbulence. That one is going to be fun. So if you are seeing all of these events and um, you're not a member of Reinventing the Tattoo yet, but these all sound like um, uh, th this one, the members only one sounds like fun and you'd like to join us, you can just go to www.reinventingthetattoo.com slash subscriptions and you can join us there. Um, <clears throat> on Tuesday, there's going to be the Reinventing the Tattoo podcast with Tommy Lee Wentner. Wentner. Um, he specializes in dark and creepy tattoos, black and gray, and Guy's going to be talking to him. And then later on that night at 8 p.m., we're going to be having uh, Russ Abbott on talking about Tattoo Smart and Reinventing Tattoo Design. Uh, the next day, Wednesday, on the 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there's going to be live at the Castro. Um, Haley Adams and Jess Koala will be interviewing Leslie Ma, um, uh, who was in Tribe 8, a um, queer core music from the 90s. And they're going to be talking about tattoos and that whole culture. It's going to be real cool. And then on Thursday, we've got the Tattoo Collecting Podcast, number 17 with Chuck Beasy. And he's just a major pool collector. Um, and uh, Fawn Baker and Jordan Rookus are going to be chatting with him about all of his wild experiences getting tattooed by lots of different people. Um, and then on Sunday, so a whole week from now, um, one of our Reinventing members is going to be doing uh, another drawing group for a little bit of a different time frame. So 1 p.m. on Sunday, September or December 20th. Uh, yeah, so lots of events coming up this week. Um, but tonight we are painting mermaid. So Judy, what do you got going on there so far for tonight? Uh, I just have a sketch going so far, just a little sketch, and I didn't like it too much, so I'm just going <laughs> to cover over it. <laughs> that happens. And uh, if anybody's in the comments, we'd love to hear from you, um, hear about what you're painting. Uh, and we're going to be putting the Zoom link up in a little bit, and you guys can zoom in and show us what you're painting. Um, but we'd love to know who's here already. And I'm going to be painting. Let's change my camera here. I'm going to be painting a mermaid, but I'm kind of making her up close because I I don't want to uh, get too lost in tiny details as I'm not used to doing that yet for this sort of paints. So This is, oh, you can kind of even see it. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to have this lady's face, and she's going to be kind of fishy and have some swirly, almost like beta fish 
um, fins coming off. So that should be fun. And Judy, are you doing, you do uh, acrylics, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I got my handy dandy cheap Walmart uh, paint brushes. Oh, nice. That's awesome when you can get it nice and cheap. For sure. I only have a few brushes. Um, I, I can't remember how much they were. I got them for acrylics, but now I've been using them for oils and they seem fine. <laughs> I'm That's sure there's great. some people that would like be very poo-poo uh, on that, but I've never, uh, never got, never tried the specific oil ones. So I just got to set up my colors. What kind of colors scheme are you going to be going with tonight? Are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was thinking um, blue, mostly blue, a yeah. touch of green, and maybe a bit of red. Awesome. And maybe every other color. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it always goes for me. <laughs> I just always end up using rainbows everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> I just already got paint all over myself. This is how I do things. it every time. That's why I put a scarf <laughs> down under me. I'm super messy. Oh, man. It's so funny. Well, oils, I warn you, if you do end up getting into oils, they are even worse. It's craziness. Um, it never they're so dries. lovely to use, but they are wet. Like the reason I have paint on me right now is because I literally touched uh, wet paint that was there from well, oh, two weeks ago. <laughs> it just it just shows you how easily we can catch COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oil paint. <laughs> if COVID was oil paint, you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guy. Good timing. We've just done Hello, some introductions. Judy. Hi, how you doing? Hell, I'm doing good. Uh, <laughs> oh, and daughter's here. She's going to be painting with us. Hi, Kara. And uh, <laughs> she wanted to uh, uh, give a proper introduction. So, yeah, <laughs> some kind of amorphous, deep-throated sound is perfect. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're just talking about how easy it is to get paint on you. I've already gotten some on me. Excellent. Well, I'm going to sw switch my camera around. Uh, we're live, I take it. We are. Okay, well, I, I guess I should just say hello, everyone. Uh, uh, wait, or you can ask mom for the uh, transfer paper. Good evening, everyone. W uh, welcome to uh, this evening's uh, Sunday Night Paint Jam. We've got Judy Parker here. Uh, I imagine there's already been some introduction, but uh, I just wanted to give a little background on Judy since... Uh, She's been one of those awesome people that's uh, been around in tattooing, as long as I have anyway. Uh, she's uh, responsible for a lot of very popular, well-known flash designs too, a lot of the Cherry Creek stuff. Many of you have tattooed No Cherry Creek. Nope, never did no? Cherry Creek, nope. You never did Cherry Creek? <laughs> no, huh. but I know where I get that from. I don't know, they look similar. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> You've done many, many sheets of very well-known flash. And uh, you could always see by uh, Judy's big uh, trademark signature on them. And uh, then, of course, she's just one of those personalities that I've seen many times at conventions. And I've had the pleasure of doing a, a large collaborative tattoo with Judy, uh, some sea turtles. And uh, yeah, she just, uh, she really knocks it out of the park every time. She does a lot of live painting on Instagram uh, these days. and. So I thought it'd be really great to have her uh, co-host one of these things. And she's chosen a mermaid for her theme tonight. I'm going to flip my camera around. Uh, I'm going just slightly more abstract, but kind of in the same theme. Well, I've got to fix this tripod thing. Are you painting with oil? I am not painting with oil tonight, I don't think. Okay. Because I... Uh, I'm not prepared enough to do that, I don't think. But yeah, here's, here's my reference. It's just a fin, some scales and fins, oh, right? Oh, that's great. Very flowy, and I think I'm gonna so get a little, a little bit more, a little bit more rainbowy with it. I think with the colors, and then uh, Kaya is going to uh, paint this guy because she wants to celebrate oh. her own betta fish. Although she couldn't get a 
a photo of her own beta that was nearly as detailed as this one. So she just chose an online reference. It's funny how, uh, how my pet beta is. He's always begging for food, like <laughs> you might be able to imagine. <laughs> always hungry. So Judy, could I see, uh, do you have a reference or, or a, a sketch that you've done for tonight? Or are you just going I for just it? Drew, I just drew a little bit on the on the uh, canvas and I didn't like it, so I'm covering it over. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just gonna wing it. Okay, well, I'm just gonna thin it. <laughs> thin it, and thin it good. I think I'm gonna just kind of pencil this on and I'm just gonna look at my reference and these twists and turns of this diaphanous thin stuff. I'm gonna try to capture the cooler aspect Man, of it. Few brushes yeah, have one disadvantage, they lose their hair like I do. Betas do? No, my my brush does. Oh, oh. your brush. <laughs> I just yeah. got new Walmart brushes and they're not great. Oh no, they're not. Oh, it's a long piece of sky that can go all the way across from here to here. Yeah. That's good. Got one. Right. Oh. Yeah, my my favorite brushes are the Windsor Newton Monarch brushes. Uh, yeah, but uh, I I just kind of wreck them after a while, and before you know it, I'm using nothing but beater brushes. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The beaters are useful too. Mm -hmm. I try to I try to keep them. Gonna... Even when I damage a brush, I'll keep it because I might use it just to stir something. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, there's still a nice little tool. Yeah, and uh, for scumbling, you know, for that kind of brush work where you're just scrubbing your paint and, uh, oh, cool. you know, you need something that's that's stiff and, and not too pointed. That's what okay. it's called, scumbling? That's scumbling, huge. yes, that is I the, like that's, I did not make that word up. <laughs> I love when Is technical it terms are really cute. What was that? Is that a real word? Scumbling, yeah. yes. It is an actual <laughs> art school term. Not that I went to art school or anything. but uh, I thought you did. Hmm. No. no. I mean, I took a couple of art classes. Uh, when I was out of high school, my sister and I went to uh, some figure drawing classes. And... Uh, that was really, you know, I mean, I was a teenager at the time, and so it kind of helped put me in that sort of mindset. But no, uh, I am self-taught. And Excellent. of course, you know, a lot of my education has just been working alongside other artists. That's a good education right there. Yeah. The best, I think. Collaborating as much as possible, or even just sharing booths or being next to a booth with somebody. Uh, you know, I mean, I think that uh, tattooers. You can learn a lot by doing that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Tattooers are very open to taking influence and ideas from each other, and, and I think that there's there's just this understanding that you know you're going to filter it and make it your own, and not not rip it off too blatantly. And and uh, I think there's there's a lot of respect among most tattooers in that sense. Absolutely. So we've got uh, Leo Gonzalez is joining us so far. In hey, the Leo. So again, if anybody's in the in the comments, you're welcome to say who you are, where you're coming from. We'd love to hear about it. And eventually we're going to be sharing a Zoom link so we can all see what you're up to. Yeah, and uh, Leo, I would love to talk to you sometime about possibly hosting something regular. You and Rain had talked about maybe having a, a fantasy sort of uh, course, or, or even if it was just like a weekly fantasy drawing or paint group. I think that there would be a, a group of people that would be very much on board with that. Yeah. Oh, Tavon's in the house as well. Hi, Tavon. 
Yeah, I love the tree thing that he did last week. Was that last week? I totally lost track. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I was just saying that. Something like that. One of the last weeks. Yeah, so tomorrow night we're going to have another chapter of Elemental Flow. This time we're doing Atmospheric Turbulence. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. In some ways, this this Finn study here is is all about turbulence. It's not atmospheric. It's more fluid. And uh, this is an interesting point that Leo had brought up because he was drawing uh, a large piece, I think, for his wife, and really wanting to nail it, get it right. And uh, he wanted to do something that was sort of like fluid, underwater kind of kind of water and tried making fluid motions but they looked sort of more atmospheric than than aquatic i think that was the the consensus and mm -hmm. he ended up uh, going back to something more like your your traditional waves which are just unmistakably fluid it's interesting how different elements have have different styles of turbulence and fluidity and that kind of thing All right. Also, Rob Shaw's in here. You're up. Gonzalez says that he would love to do that. All right. Um, and Rob saying that he's watching and very cool. Kick ass. Um, <laughs> and Melissa Sink is here as well. Might be able to make it if she's if we're still painting in an hour or so because she's just okay. leaving the shop. I'm sure we'll all be here. <laughs> Yes, yes, we are just getting warmed up. Yeah, the only thing that's going to slow me down tonight is unfortunately, I've got bunches of books to pack. Mm -hmm. which, uh, I'm happy people are buying books and I want to get them out on time. I know that the clock is ticking. So, about two and a half hours or something like that, I'm going to have to switch to that zone. Although if I'm happy enough where this is going, I might not want to prime myself away. <laughs> Lighting oh, yeah. for water is pretty trippy. Yeah, I, I just love how fluid this is. Cause like if you were to take a curtain of fabric mm -hmm. and uh, you know, have it flap in the breeze, it would be a completely different style of fluidity, you know? Totally. I don't know if you're familiar with Maxfield Parish. I'm pretty sure I brought him up in a previous session, but he always did these uh, women who are wearing these uh, just long flowing pieces of fabric that would then just be billowing in the wind. Yeah. And, uh, very dramatic. And, uh, and very turbulent. Yeah, I think I remember those. Beautiful. Always blows my mind when there's like old sculptures from ancient times where they captured that flow of the fabric. I have no concept of how you do that with marble stone. Yeah. Yeah, well... I think you just have to understand that fluidity. I don't know if you saw these pictures. I think Kaya Heitland posted them. Yeah. Uh, a friend of hers who makes these fake flowers out of clay. Oh, yes. Insane. Crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it, it looks like fluid motion just captured. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I always thought it was interesting how the word flower is just like, Flow or a thing that flows. Mm, I like that. Oh, SJ's here as well. Hi, SJ yeah, and right. Chris Hall. Nice. Hey, Chris. Hey, awesome. SJ. We got a good group. She is from Phoenix or Arizona. I don't know if it's Phoenix. Oh, 
All right. Now, Kai is really excited about her drawing. I'm going to show it off real quick. Oh, beautiful. I have so far. I usually oh. draw before. I usually draw before I start painting. Right now, I have the canvas next to my reference, and I'm just basically copying what I see. Except I'm also adding my own kind of shading that I just interpret. Right. You know, because, I, because I watch my beta fish and study him swimming around in this cage a lot of the time, and I mean, I study the way that, like, his tail and his fins flow. Mm-hmm. Very mesmerizing. Well, I'm going to actually get ready to start painting. I've got a very limited palette. I, you know, part of me is tempted to go for it with oils because I just got a way better collection of oils. I'm going to take oil because I'm going to try to go for wheels. Yes, I agree. Okay. Well, um, I think that, let's I'm see, we've got this color. color. I'm going to go into different colors than my reference. Okay. Okay. Well, do you think it's you like, can make do with what we've got here? Yeah. The reason why is because we only have these colors. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes that's, here we are professional artists and we're like, don't have blue <laughs> acrylic paint. <laughs> I've got every color of tattoo pigment though. <laughs> you know what happened though? You know, because of COVID and a drastically slowed down schedule and the periods of not working is, oh, it's dried up. I've had so oh, many pigments that have just dried up. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, actually, I was just checking on that a, a couple weeks ago because I'm hoping to be able to start tattooing soon. And, and I was like, man, I should really look at all of these things. It's like uh, some of them had expired, so I had to get rid of them. And it looked like they were all wet, but I'm going to have to double check again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of them you can just pour some keep it wet, keep it wet or whatever in witch hazel and, and yeah. give it a good shake. But... Sometimes it's just too far gone. Yeah, I've, I've lost way more pigment than this year than an average year. I mean, there's always casualties. And there's yeah. the ones that are like really neat, but they don't get used very often. Yeah, exactly. I had some, uh, some black light ink, which I've like used once. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was done. that stuff is a novelty that I don't think has the staying power. Yeah, I have not. It's funny. There was a time where the, it was really popular. I kept getting asked about it. And I was like, no, no, I don't have it. No, I don't have it. And it was like, you know, everybody's going to raves and stuff. There would be a reason to have that. <laughs> and then right. as soon as I got it, I was like, fine, I'll get it. And then I got it and then nobody wanted it. <laughs> like, okay, that was definitely, definitely a trend, I guess. <laughs> I was too late. Yeah, these things come and go. And then, then there it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that uh, I'd rather do the kinds of tattoos that people keep getting, you know? Yes. And they're going to look cool under whatever light. <laughs> yes, that's the idea. <laughs> so SJ is saying, um, hey, everyone, I believe tomorrow is the last official night for the fireside workshop. And then a week after that, I can start hopping on the Monday night exercises again. I've definitely missed them. Awesome. That'll be cool to see you again there. And Spencer Caliguri is saying, hey, everyone, I'm painting right now. How can I join? Um, we'll be putting the uh, Zoom link out there in a little bit. All right. I'm glad Spencer is joining us. Uh, I have yet to be able to meet Spencer in person. I mean, we might have met a long time ago and uh, but uh, we actually had a chance to do a really fun collaborative painting over this summer. Um, for one of the more epic things I've gotten to finish this year. Really appreciate his uh, landscape style. He's a guy that does landscape and bio uh, equally well, sometimes kind of together in the same uh, paintings and stuff. I'm going to go get a jar of fresh water. Here is a cook. Will it open? 
We've got Ryan Mastanitz from Maryland joining us on Facebook. Awesome. So is this uh, actually have, oh, nice. We actually do have a blue acrylic. The fallow nice. turquoise. All right. Well, I am going to start Ooh, this with an acrylic painting. Let's see what happens from there. Nice. So Judy, I guess it's your call when you feel like you're settled in enough and you want to share out the Zoom link and invite other people in. Oh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh, no, no. Sandy will do that. I'm just saying when you feel ready, are you settled in? And, oh, wow. You, you're definitely already moving along. Yeah, let's let's I'm do that. Me. Yeah, you're rocking it. Holy smokes. That was great. Already. Well, I'm going to work a lot of stuff out. <laughs> awesome. Well, then, yeah, I will take that Zoom link and I'll share it around. Yeah, you, you actually have taken on kind of a ambitious project. Me? Yeah, I no. think. I do, these, I do these quite often. I do mermaids. I must have like 10 of them laying around here. Nice. Okay. Wow. But I thought I should start a new one because, you know, because we're doing it. Right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Although anybody who's coming on board with a project in progress is more than welcome. Okay. Let me put this away real quick. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the colors that you have there. It's gorgeous. Well, who knows what I will cover them with? <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of painting. I love acrylics because you can uh, cover so quickly and get her done. <laughs> yeah, otherwise you have to wait until it all dries. That is a bit of a tough one. The, the oils when you're using the oils are you using that um the quick drying uh uh vehicle well yeah when, when i paint an oil which i'm not doing right now uh i use liquid which is a type yeah. of uh, alkyd and that's yep, usually like overnight and uh that's Plenty fast, you know, uh, any faster is almost too fast. Uh, liquid can get kind of sticky um, after an hour or two. Oh. Which yeah, isn't terrible. The, the moving it around, I can imagine that being like startling if you didn't, if you weren't prepared for it to get sticky. Yeah, it just there comes a point where you just feel like, eh, I should just leave this alone. Come yeah. back to it tomorrow. Yeah. But really I the trick I'm is, gonna... you know, painting with oil, I just try to, you know, come up with a an order of events where I won't make mud and I can get a really nice first pass. And and it almost never feels finished on the first day. Mm -hmm. But uh you know, I'll, I'll get the whole canvas covered and, uh, and it won't be muddy. Always nice to get another run at it. So Spencer's just joining us. And I'm just going to let anybody know that if you're joining on the Zoom, which is in the comments now, just make sure that you have muted anything that is streaming the event. Um, otherwise, we're going to get a little bit of a... Um, <laughs> the echo uh, problem. Yes. Yeah, basically the, the window that you were watching it on, just uh, turn the sound off on that uh, when you start your Zoom call. And that way we won't get the feedback echo. Yeah, earlier this summer. I don't know. No, nope, uh, you're, you, you're good. You're right. Yeah, we we would definitely know. It gets crazy and chaotic when that happens. <laughs> Just all of a sudden, nothing makes sense, and <laughs> it feels like the world is falling apart. <laughs> yeah. That's the Zoom echo. <laughs> it's true. You're like, what's going on? <laughs> But yeah, we spent the summer figuring that out. And uh, 
yeah, doing lots of live broadcasts with Zoom echoes on them. And we've also <laughs> watched like CNN and, you know, <laughs> companies like that have terrible Zoom echo problems. So, yeah, uh, yeah we're all trying to go with this. All right. Spencer. All right. I wonder what Spencer's working on. Yeah, he's just getting it all figured out. Hi, he's Spencer. On. All right. Oh, you know, I, I didn't check my messages. My brother may join us tonight. Oh, sweet. Um, Spencer, yeah. real quick, I'm just going to ask you to turn your phone um, horizontal, if you can, uh, 90 degrees. Cinema. Cinema. There you go. Land Landscape, Landscape as opposed cinema. to portrait. Yeah. It'll just mean that we can kind of see what you're doing a little bit bigger. Not sure if you can hear me yet. There we go. And we've got Leo Gonzalez has joined us as well. Hey guys. Hey. Good to see you, Leo. Yeah. Good to see everybody. You still, uh, still hammering away at the same one? Yeah, still am. <laughs> trying, still trying to figure out this technology thing, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Technologists are still trying to figure out this technology thing. <laughs> They'll get back to us. <laughs> so, Leo, how many hours do you think you've got in there so far? Oh, I, I'm not paying attention to that at yeah. all. <laughs> um, it's it's pretty epic. Amount. Oh, yeah, probably over 100 by this point, right? Oh, man, not, maybe not that much, but I'm working towards it. <laughs> Spencer, I'm not sure if you have your sound on. It looked like you might have been talking to us, but we couldn't hear anything. If you uh, touch your screen at the bottom, you'll see a row of little icons, and you'll probably see the microphone with a red line through it. You tap that, it'll enable your sound. All right, are we hearing Spencer now? Almost. <laughs> Tech issues. Tech issues. And Leo, that is an acrylic piece, right? Uh, no, it's oil. It's oil, okay. So do you do an acrylic underpainting? I do an acrylic underpainting and then work, work oil into it. I think you totally. I really, I really don't know how to paint uh, well with acrylics. I paint little Warhammer miniatures with acrylics and that's about the extent of my yeah. acrylic knowledge. Yeah, that makes sense, the tininess. Oh, I think Spencer was that us being able to hear you. I believe so. I guess you can hear me then. All right, Spencer. Good evening. Good evening. Glad you could join never, us. Oh yeah, this is cool. I've never done this before. Awesome. Um, so again, uh, I don't know if you could hear us before, but we're just wondering if you can put your phone so that it's on landscape mode um, instead oh. of portrait, and that way we can kind of see a little bit bigger of what you're. All right, doing. turn it sideways. Just turn it sideways? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Nice. It's looking great here, Dyson. Impressive. What are you going to use for the background? Thanks, babe. It's going to be a dark background to make it really pop. I can see you guys so much better. My painting, is, this painting is so small. <laughs> Four That's by cool, six though. inches. That's epic. Thanks. Is that a beautiful sunset? Oh, yeah. Somewhere you saw? 
It is. It's a low spot down the street from my house that I took a picture of the other day. That's awesome. Seems like you've really focused on a lot of landscapes this this summer and, and, and fall, and uh, a lot of them seem like they're right from your neck of the woods. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I think I realized that they're kind of my favorite my favorite paintings. Mm. So if I maybe get get better at learning landscapes, I can start applying it more to more stuff like the the one that you and I did. And even in the context of a tattoo, you know, you're you're then able to create a much greater sense of scale and distance and uh you know, have a, have a command of that atmospheric interference, you know, to be able to express distance with contrast, you know, really effectively. Right, Definitely right. think it helps do the, the landscapes for that reason. Yeah, yeah, I love the idea. I just never get around to it. I told myself this fall that I was gonna start painting the skies try to do it in the evening we've mm -hmm. got some really amazing skies over the over the evening there's a couple painters i follow that paint a lot of skies and uh just didn't get around to it i usually mm -hmm. end up painting like close-up studies of things instead and i don't know if that's just habitual but uh yeah at some point guys um it's, uh, let's see, William Hawkins is one of the painters I follow who does skies almost exclusively. And his are big and chunky brushwork. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I thought, from a distance. Yeah. yeah. I need to check him out. I've never, I've never even heard of him. I follow a bunch of different styles of landscape artists. Tell them that it looks realistic from a distance. Um, well, let's see. Hawkins' stuff isn't very realistic, it's very stylized. Uh, but there, there are a few others. I can't name everyone that I follow off the top of my head. Um, Lynn Bodges is a, a palette knife artist and his, his work borders on the miraculous. I, I hate to even <laughs> say that about anybody, but his ability to capture a, a mood in a place and it almost looks realistic, although it's still clearly giant chunks of hanging gobbed up paint, you know, but it still looks realistic. It's just crazy. I love that. That off, yeah. That's like one thing I would like to try to learn. I feel like every, you know, by the time a painting is done, I've like got a stranglehold on it and just <laughs> being confident and big chunks of paint and expressive strokes and just, you know, not being so worried about making every, you know, making things perfect. Like I love paintings that look like paintings, you know, rather than... Mm -hmm trying to be but that would be that guy william hawkins his his sky paintings are just uh you know that he, he's he's working from you know actual landscapes a lot of the time but the stylization of the brushwork is is very bold uh nice and it's fun too and he's kind of a fun character no i have to go check him out what was the other one that you said? That's Lynn Bodges. I think it's Bodges, Bodges Art, B-O-G-G-E-S-S. -S. Oh, okay. Highly recommend that guy. He's just uh, unreasonably good. <laughs> I've been another, doing a, a lot of tutorials lately. There's a lot of these awesome like uh, online things that are coming up now. Like mm -hmm. uh, Sentient Academy and yep. No Wave, like they're crazy, reasonably priced stuff too. Like fifty bucks for you know four hour workshop. Awesome. Yeah, for me, it's more of a time bankruptcy problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the painters I follow, uh, Irina Cumberland, she does. Oh yeah, just water. Uh, yep. And I, uh, I know that she does courses. I, I'd like to check out one of those. Yeah, I think you actually like sent me a, sent me one one time. Okay. Like, hey, you should do this. <laughs> I should. I should. 
<laughs> no, it seems. I mean, you're so busy. I don't know how you make time for anything. <laughs> you have your hand in so many different things. Caffeine, four hours of sleep. <laughs> oh. Not actually a good thing at all. But, uh, two hours of sleep. Tell them that. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's two hours. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but uh, actually, yes, it was. Yeah, the uh, just trying to get all the books shipped and do all this other stuff too has been pretty crazy. Because you know, the rest of the year it hasn't made sense for us to retain our employee because everything slowed down so much. But then all of a sudden, it's like kapow, and I'm happy that people want books. But uh, yeah. so that and the tattoo schedule, and uh, I've been trying to fix our basement. And I'm trying to be a dad, and I'm trying to be a half decent hub husband too. And, and uh, I'm trying to roll, oh, roll out this app, you know. Uh, and, and thank God, Sandy and Gabe have been on top of that because uh, I've just got my hand in so many things. It's been hard to uh, stay consistent with it, but uh, they've been banging away at it every day, which is pretty exciting. You can actually find it in the app store now. Yeah, Kai is a uh, fish pain. It's just crazy good already. I'm being, I'm being the slow one right now, but I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm, I'm not feeling in any hurry. I like the, uh, I don't, I don't want to lose the diaphanous quality of this. I'd like it to really feel um, loose and, and uh, flowing and extremely lightweight. Yeah, it looks yeah, transparent. <laughs> looks awesome. Sometimes I find that, like, if I'm trying to blend white into color areas, and there's like certain segments that I benefit by painting the entire area, all the segments white, and then uh, putting the other colors in. Yeah, well, you, you get some wet paint down there, and then while it's still wet, you can blend into it, wet on wet. And so that works the best nice. for me. Well, if you want to do blending, well, you know, in acrylic, you can do wet on wet. You can scumble, that is, you let, let your <laughs> previous color dry, and then you, you know, put small amounts of color on top of that and scrub on it to, to uh, kind of spread it out, you know, evenly and thinly. Um, you can do very, very fine cross hatching with uh, different colors to create the gradient of your choice. There's a lot of ways of doing it in acrylic. But of course with oil, it just stays wet and you can just go for it. Yeah, I love the freedom to play around with the oils. Yeah, I mean, when I'm painting on my own, it's almost always oil. These uh, Sunday night paint jams, I've been going with acrylic for reasons of expediency. And, and I feel like almost any of them I could treat as underpaintings, mm -hmm. and come back with oil. And, and uh, you know, the landscape that I started, I really would like to get back to that uh, with oil. Yeah, that was looking epic already. I saw it when well, you were finishing it up on the uh, on the morning the morning drawing session. All right, yeah. Now both Kai and Michelle think I should leave it alone, so maybe I. Won't. <laughs> oh, that's what always happens with my mom. We're always like, "Oh, that's great," and she's like, "Yeah, but I'm gonna have to paint over it." And we're like, "No." <laughs> it's nice having the voice of reason in the household. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, just starting to really warm up to painting on gesso boards, too, because... Uh, I used to always appreciate canvas because it kind of hid your brushwork a little bit. You know, the nap of the canvas would sort of, I don't know, uh, slightly disguise your, uh, the detail of the brushwork and make it look a little bit smoother. But it also kind of 
hazed out some of your detail, like the nap of the canvas itself would represent almost like a pixel. You couldn't go mm -hmm. any smaller than the pixel resolution of the canvas. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, I've been appreciating getting back onto Jesso boards again. This has been at the urging of, of my family here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now a bunch of places are selling them cheap too, pre gessoed wood panels. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, I make them myself a lot of the time too. We have a few little wood panels and I, and I haven't done anything with them because I, I wasn't sure exactly how to work them, but I guess you gesso them first then. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's ideally what you want to do because if you don't, um, it sort of soaks up the paint sometimes, mm. sometimes long after. Oh. <laughs> and, yeah, and your painting will become duller. Uh -huh. uh, the other thing is that uh, depending on the kind of wood that it is, if it's not an artist, actual artist panel, uh, like maple or something like that, you'll uh, get hairline cracks in it. Oh, no. Yeah, I remember Michelle painted this mandala on this piece of plywood, circular piece of plywood that I cut out. It was, it was uh, I think, 24 inches diameter and uh, man that she put the hours into that thing oh. and then uh a year passed and it just started oh. to see the high hairline cracks appearing oh man so yeah i'm cautious about the kind of wood that i paint on unless I'm, I'm doing like the the chris hall style like work with the wood grain kind of yeah. things but because i think that that's all sort of part and parcel with it yeah the character of the wood yeah, if it cracked, it would probably just create some cool, like, texture that goes along with the pattern. I'm being hyper, 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 hyper. So, anybody want a cat? I just had more cats <laughs> show up. I always He's been friendly cats. when you approach him gently. <laughs> oh, man, we've, we've, we've got an infestation of cats. I <laughs> love kitty cats. My was just in. But he's gone. Uh, oh, he's not dead. He just left. Oh, he just left the studio, right? Yeah, <laughs> he got bored. Oh, yeah, boy. he's like, How oh, my human is doing that sitting in front of a rectangle thing again? Rats, <laughs> I can't sit on the middle of it because it's up on an easel. Rats. <laughs> Right now, my noisy cat is meeping at the door. He has a really strange meow, and he's meeping his heart out at the door. Nobody. Any, anytime I'm in a room that he's not in, he'll meep and he'll meep and he, it'll meep and he'll meep, but he's not allowed in this room because we don't want cat hairs in our paintings. Oh, my favorite is when I'm trying to do oh, a workshop. They let one of the cats into the, the office while I'm doing a workshop, and it's just immediately <laughs> on my sketchbook. She's a weird cat. <laughs> Oh, you yeah, seem we, to be we, paying attention to this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we could have a, a reality show just about our freaking cats. Oh, definitely. Just too many of them. It's a completely irrational situation. <laughs> they just show up. Like, we named the cat that showed up just now Moo. Moo. It looks like a cow. Oh. Not not because it's big, but it's got markings like a cow. Yes. Oh man, I yeah, I would love to have a cat. I just keep like trying to get the cat from next door to he he really likes our uh our backyard and so he's in there almost every day and I just have been working on gaining his trust so that I can pet him <laughs> and I got to play with him the other day. It was so lovely. But it definitely took him a little while to trust me. What is it about them that makes us feel like we're privileged to have them accept us? I don't know what it is, but it's so. And cute. they're such jerks, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's just be honest. And we're just like, oh, they didn't scratch me. They, they let me pet them. <laughs> what a treat. All a cat gives you its um, friendship. It's yeah. not like a dog. If it gives you its friendship, you feel privileged. It's true. The dog's like, oh, you, you're a person? I love you already. Oh, yep. you too? I love you too. 
Which is great, too. Yes. Do you have a dog, too? We don't. I wish I had a dog. We have 11 <laughs> cats. Can we have 11 you? cats, which I figure is equivalent to at least three dogs. Yeah, you've made it up to, like, at least three dogs, for sure. <laughs> mine uses the toilet, so mine is exceptional. Wow. Oh, I wow. A dog doing mm-hmm. that. That's awesome. They say that they can teach them to do that. I, I can't imagine doing that. To do what? Use the toilet. Wow. So, so is it a little dog? I'm seeing meet the parents. <laughs> so is it a little dog? Or is it Mine a cat? is a cat. Okay, yeah, so her cat uses it. Okay, so I've never heard of a dog using the toilet. I definitely have heard of cats using it, and you can actually get these kits. <laughs> yep, uh, I got that. You can uh, you get that for the dogs, too. Oh, really? wow, well, okay. I've never well, heard of know, a dog doing it. I think you'd probably Look have to get them young. Line. You have to do it before they're six months old. Uh, yeah. I think sense. with cats, it would probably be kind of like that, too, except... Oh, so I can't do it with meats? Well, I mean, you can try, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it would be sort of disruptive to try to do that. Yeah, John Clue said that his cat just started doing it. With nice. no prompting whatsoever. Excellent. Just saw that, that its human was using it and figured, yeah. ah, that's what that thing is for. <laughs> oh, I see. This is uh, the big drinking fountain is actually the pooping fountain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't drink out of the toilet. Yeah, they, they often will do that. Gotta, just, gotta yes. give them a demonstration. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how did Bahamut get out. burned? Your, your big lizard got burned. What happened? Yeah, um, so the uh, he, he gets his heat in the enclosure because it's a huge enclosure. It's like 16 foot by 12 foot. So he gets his heat through uh, various heat fixtures or heat lamps throughout the cage. And he had two of the double fixtures went out. And my contractor was just, it was like pulling teeth to, to try to get him. To, to come and fix that. And I don't know the first thing about any of that. So I was kind of reliant on him. And uh, so anyhow, it, the lizard went a couple months with lowered heat, but I figured, oh, he'll be fine because he's got his basking uh, site and he, you know, he's got plenty of heat up there. But what ended up happening was he was just spending too much time under the basking lights and, and they're a lot closer to him. And so he ended up getting some burns. They're very, very superficial. So he's, he's totally fine. Um, he didn't feel a thing. Um, but once I figured out what, what was wrong, um, really, it's just a matter of, of uh, putting some ointment and stuff on him. And he's, he's doing fine. But I decided to take him to the vet anyway, because he's never really had a, uh, a, a, a vet appointment or a checkup. You know, mm-hmm. he's, never, he's never been to the vet. So we took him and did a a full, you know, did a fecal exam. We did a a culture just to make sure there wasn't any any bacteria going on. I'm uh, giving him antibiotics for now, just in case there's any kind of infection going on. But I think he's, I don't, I don't think he has anything. It's fun though, trying to, six years. Okay. Is that old for a lizard? Oh, I don't know. Uh, He probably lives to be what, like 15, 20? If we're lucky, he could get 20 to 25. Wow. Yeah. Cool. It was a, f- a fun uh, nervousness today trying to go in and give a seven and a half foot lizard a, an injection. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. And he was a sweetheart. He didn't flinch. He didn't freak out or anything. He, he oh. took it like a champ. That's amazing. But, but, but still a little nerve wracking for me. <laughs> no kidding. What kind of, is it an iguana? It's a Asian water monitor. Oh, cool. So this is like just one step down from a Komodo dragon. <laughs> yeah, it's the, same, it's the same family. Just there's the Komodo monitors, the largest lizard, and the Asian water monitor is the second largest lizard in the world. Wow. He's about, he's about seven, seven foot three oh, inches the last that. time we, we measurement we got on him last oh, year. Yeah, he knows. Amazing. He knows but his dad's dad eight and a half feet even. long. Wow. That's wild. 
I have a method for doing the scales on my beta fish. So I white out an area and then I take a brush with whatever pigment I want to do the scales in. And I basically just put in the paint in the shape of scales in the white area. And it actually works. It's right. making it more wow. white. Sometimes I like to put highlights down first, especially when I'm working with oil, because if you put the highlights down, you know, first, you're not putting them down over wet color, which mm -hmm. makes them muddy. So, and then you can just kind of play the, the dark into them. Yeah. I had a fun bit on this painting earlier this week where I put some real dark glazes down um, and then took a brush with and wiped it off with, uh, washed it off with turpentine, patted it a little bit on my paper towel and then used the dry brush with this just a tiny bit of turpentine in it to kind of scrape away painting to pull highlights out. Oh, nice, nice. I've, I've seen people do that before. So that's, that's a good way to make highlights without laying down opaque white paint over get, color. How do I get Mookie's to Taking away from Cool. Okay. So uh, should we take a minute to just sort of look at everybody's project, everyone who's actually tuned in now? Sure. Uh, to see where yeah. we're at. All right, Judy, I'm going to start with you here. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so, so Judy, we cannot see your mermaid's head. Ah, yeah. Wow, this is a tall canvas. Well, it's three feet by a foot. Oh. Okay. I yeah. just oh, wow. I just like that shape for mermaids. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. well, and also it's, it's just fun painting on tall aspect ratios. Michelle's been doing a bunch of, of one to two ratio canvases well boards actually oh neat i love the water at the bottom awesome you're, you're definitely moving already yeah holy moly that's you beautiful. can you can tell you've done this before <laughs> yeah i do a lot of you know you're done. <laughs> awesome okay oh so that's judy's Spencer, um, got you on there next we're going through everybody's awesome all right so is that based on a, a photo at all, or are you just going from memory? Are you talking, talking to me right now? Yeah. Spencer, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Mountain. My Sunset. thing's frozen. It's, uh, oh. yes, it's working. I'm working from a photo. Pretty. But I'm taking small nice. liberties. Thanks. Yeah, I love the color gradient. Thank you. Very nice. So I wanted to show Kaya's real quick oh, <laughs> because she's really moving along. I'm nowhere near done. Um, you I'm know, gonna, I got this obnoxious I'm shadow. Gonna feel try to, uh, I'm going to try to make it as realistic as, you know what? I'm going to make it painterly but realistic at the same time because, I mean, why <laughs> make it look like a photo when there's photos? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Really cool composition there. Yeah. So I'm gonna make it. So I'm gonna make it brush strokey, but mathematically realistic. Wow. Okay, or at least attempt to do that. Of course, here's mine. Let's see who else have we got. Uh, awesome. Nice. Got anybody else? That's uh. We've got Leo on here. That thing is insane, wow. dude. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to paint these little. Uh, you can't really see them, but little uh, turkey tail. Uh, yeah. I can oh. see the sort of like the, the half moon shelf fungus shapes there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Put oh. some mushrooms in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun foreground That's detail cool. of it. I just actually started a tattoo with some turkey tail in it. Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I saw that. The one with the ginger root and stuff. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah ginseng. So cool. yep. Gin, ginseng. That yeah. sky looks so good. Oh my God. Thank you. That's going to be like one of those things that you can look at for hours. Just finding Yeah. Out. So I take it that central character is probably going to be a little higher contrast. He's the least developed. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's just underpainting. Hasn't had any oil on it yet. Saving him for last. <laughs> yeah. That's the underpainting. <laughs> Holy I was so excited. I honestly hadn't found out about your work until 
I don't know, like, I guess it was maybe six months ago. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> Thanks, man. A new favorite. <laughs> For sure. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Likewise. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that thing that you and Guy did was amazing, too. Oh, thanks a lot. It was a lot of fun. So, Leo, you've got a copy of the encyclopedia, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, when you first open volume one, Uh the first thing you see is one of Spencer's paintings. That really super bold, colorful, high contrast, very 3D atmospheric piece of bio that's, that's Spencer. Oh, cool. I'll go, I'll go back and double check that. And then Leo's got a full page piece in there also. Uh, that's sort of, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, kind of like Cthulhu mech kind of stuff. Uh, eyeballs and teeth. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And that's in, the, I think, the monster mech section. Why didn't you give me a piece? If anybody else is out there painting and you want to come and join the Zoom, that Zoom link's still just right there in the chat. Guy, I wasn't here earlier, obviously, when you... What are you uh, painting? That thing's crazy. Is that from your mind, or are you looking at some... <laughs> it's not from my mind. I wish I could say it was. Uh, oh, is that a beta but... fin? Oh my yeah, God. it's a beta fin, exactly. <laughs> it just <Yeah>. came to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love the flow of this. And yeah. I wanted to make something that, that said water without showing water. Mm. So, yeah, just just like that furling gra- anti-gravity. Yeah, like, like a wet curtain. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, so cool. <clears throat> so, uh, Northern California is also shut down, right? Tattoo wise, yep. uh, believe so. You didn't. It's good. This is small. I brush to bring it up to the fish, though. Get we just came back last week. We we had a second shutdown. Um, I can hear you whisper perfectly. It's great. It's only for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, they haven't asked us to yet, but. Uh, I think that we're we're all going to see little stages of it here and there. Yeah. Yeah, everybody in Alberta right now. Re-open. I was surprised they let us reopen because it the the numbers did not really go down at all during the the two week shutdown. The second mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't like shut down. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, a lot that's, of people that's just didn't problem. <laughs> Yeah, I went out riding the motorcycle just to get out of the house, and I was like, man, all the parking lots are filled, and the oh, grocery store yeah. seems busier than it ever was. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, people just are, are very hard-pressed to break their habits. Yeah, exactly. Which is funny, because we've just gotten into totally new habits of, like, you know, we pick up our groceries, you know, in the parking lot and things like that, and and so even when things are back to normal, we're probably still going to keep doing that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people will. Yeah. There's also a lot of people who have uh, moved their office jobs to their houses. Yeah. I know a few of them and, and uh, that's very likely going to remain the case because mm-hmm. their bosses are like, wow, we don't have to pay for an office space. This is kind yeah. of cool. Yeah. Yeah. You guys still get your work done. We can trust you. Totally. Just haven't fi- figured out the remote tattoo thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be a wild time. <laughs> well, okay, so you've got a humanoid robot that's completely sterilized. It's just sitting at a workstation. Your client walks in, and you log in, and your humanoid robot's, you know, face lights up with a you know, video of your face and you take control of the arms and, you know, you pour the palette and you do the tattoo, right? Whoa. They have some robots. What? <laughs> well, they have them for surgery. They, they've got well, them for no, surgery. Well, no, Ron Tuttle got tattooed by a tattoo robot. What? 
Was it a yeah. remote? And it said, was it a remote operated one, or was it? Uh, like no, a, it looked no. It, it looked a lot like traction. You know, they they put your body in a traction mode, and then they uh, in a device that's like traction, <clears throat> and then the machine runs like a, a printer. You know. <laughs> Okay, really so it wasn't does. being remote operated. It was it was actually it just it's just yeah. no, I think it's just you know it's carrying out a task. Yeah. So so was the tattoo any good or was it <laughs> yeah, but all it said, all it said was why? Because you know, why would you do that really? <laughs> right. Well, okay, the reason you would do that is <laughs> imagine the kind of tattoo boss that would love to have. 25 artists working for them yeah. getting 10 percent right yeah, <laughs> yeah. will happen then it'll oh, be the yeah. end of the world because there will be a union <laughs> against us they already have replaced painters yeah. you know with it's the apps you, can, you well you can change almost anything to look like a painting now right it's true yeah. it's true so so now right. uh basically they've replaced painters in that particular task where you want to just take a thing and make it look like a painting. Right. Uh, but when it comes to coming up with something new or, or, yeah. you know, we'll always uh, be there. Oh, yeah. You know, it will, we'll always have to stay ahead of the software, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so Think just imagine it. this, imagine if they did have, you know a robot that could tattoo and you could create any design anything right take a hubble photograph and feed it in there and it could just do a perfect job of it right now you also mm -hmm. know what it would really look like it would be slightly kind of thin looking and washed out it wouldn't be super saturated it would probably not age as well um you know if it was like a standalone tattoo the placement would always be not quite there you know uh <laughs> But, you know, it would be capable of doing things we simply couldn't do. And yeah. so then you've got people like me that would say, okay, I'm going to set this thing up to do my background, this thing that I just am not <laughs> capable of doing. And then I'm going to go back into it and like, you know, give it my touch. And by the time do I'm the done with it, it's going to look crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. I have to do the other thing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. So wild. I think Gabe's in the chat and he says the robot tattoo machine can test the trauma or pain and inject the perfect amount of lidocaine. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. I like that. <laughs> we could do Chloe's meds. Oh yeah, there we go. We need we need a cat, a cat medicating robot. <laughs> oh my goodness, trying to medicate cats is like such a freaking nightmare. Hey, give this pill to this bear trap here. Yeah, exactly. I remember trying to do that to one of my cats, and it's like you're trying to help them, but they don't know. And they're just like, she was, I was there for 45 minutes, ended up just like crying on the floor. <laughs> I was like, I'm just trying to help you. Why won't you let me help you? Oh, man. I've, I've ushered so many geriatric cats through their final years, so I can do oh. all of it. I can do all the injections. I can do the IV fluids. I can do But it would the... be nice to have a robot do it. Yeah, it would be nice to have a robot. <laughs> because after, like, a week of doing it, he comes out of it with, like, 11 scrapes on mm. one finger. That's not yeah. necessarily true. We had a diabetic cat for a while, and he had to, to just get insulin twice a day, and, and oh he was so gosh. chill about it, you know, so chill. A lot of oh. them are. And the ones that I've had to do IV fluids regularly, you know, they, they get used to it, and they're just like, oh, yeah, this always makes me feel better. Fine. F That's you, but nice. whatever. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. They notice that you're helping. Yeah, no, my cat would just spit the pill out and then and then chew and swallow and then you'd let her go and then she'd spit the pill out and you're like, how did you, what? How is that right, possible? Right, right. <laughs> devious. Downright devious. Yeah. Wow. Like, that was some thinking. You thought this through. See, I don't get to know all these That's cool things about cats. I've never had one. <laughs> I'm too allergic. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm allergic to cats as well. Yeah, I'm allergic to cats and bad. I have three of them. <laughs> ah, yes, oh yes. my god. 
<laughs> you you kind of outgrow the allergy, right? Oh, you I'm do. allergic to avocados, and I still eat guacamole. <laughs> there you go, because it's guacamole. Yeah. <laughs> I just struggle to breathe afterwards. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're in New Mexico. You have to eat the guacamole. Oh, yeah. goodness. Yeah, you have the best avocados there. You gotta. I'm fine. I'm fine. So who else is shut down right now? Anybody or is it just California? Um, Alberta is in Canada. I'm not sure if uh, any yeah. other provinces, but. You know, even though we we're, were allowed to go back, uh, me and the guys are there very seldom. The nice thing but... about Canada is there's not quite as many nitwits as there is in America. Well, no, they've got their own, <laughs> their own special kinds of nitwits. Oh yeah, there. we've got some nitwits. There was two and a half hour drive away from us. We had some anti-mask uh, protesters going off and they got fined and everything, but they were there. Well, that's the difference. They got fined. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah that is, that did start happening, which thank goodness, Mike, because there was, there was some... Uh, some other nitwits that were uh, literally spitting on or like verbally abusing uh, people that were in retail spaces that were asking them to wear masks. Um, mm -hmm. And then they would just become like angry and, and violent. So people had to start getting uh, How weird security people in there. It's like for grocery stores. You need security. Yeah, it's so oh, ridiculous. Isn't that insane? It's a piece of fabric. Oh, it over your face. It's I know, my right? Freedom. Exactly. It's my freedom. You're threatening my freedom. <laughs> exactly. Like, go, go protest about, you know. These, but a lot of these guys would. Freedom taken a lot of these guys would the cover. The problems in the world. Yes. A lot of these guys will cover don't themselves in beer pee and, in the world. and, and <laughs> sit in a in a hideout, a dugout for days, and that's fine. Yeah. But wearing a mask <laughs> to the grocery store for forty five minutes is too much. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Bonkers. And they call us snowflakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. You're so sensitive. <laughs> mm. <laughs> really, oh, they yeah. are the cross between a snowflake and a volcano because, like, <laughs> it takes nothing. It takes nothing for them to go completely psychotic. That's that's True. a good one. Snowflakes. A and snowflake and a volcano. volcano. <laughs> <laughs> like Sounds it. like your next painting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Andre Malcolm was on here doing the wave exercise, and at one point his wife came home and he he apologized if there was any uh, uh, hospital talk because I guess she was <clears throat> working in the hospitals right now, and he was yeah got pretty serious about it. And he was just like, "Please, everybody, just wear your mask." That's all. Yeah, my wife. My wife's an ICU nurse. All of her patients are are COVID patients, and they're oh, all dying. Mm. Wow. So it's, it's intense. Yeah, our, our next door neighbor died from COVID. Jesus. Yep. You know, it's it's for real. Yep. No, I mean he he had health problems, you know, but he sure. is the person that we're trying to protect by wearing exactly. wearing a mask, you know. Exactly. Uh, and I think that that's one of the things that that is sort of at the heart of this misunderstanding: the idea that my mask protects you. It's like, well, I don't want to protect you. I don't care about you. Exactly. <laughs> Which is, really you know. People's colors. Yeah. It's like they, they were prepared for the apocalypse to mean that they brought their guns out. And then it's in case instead it's meaning they have to be kind and care about others. And they're like, this is terrible. Yeah. Or the zombies. Oh, there's someone at the, at the uh, veterinary clinic with a mask saying, this is tyranny. And then she kept taking it. <laughs> She kept taking it off again and again. And talking and loudly and projecting. Oh, gosh. Speaking moistly as, as our prime minister. Speaking minister. moistly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was coughing. Speaking moistly just sounds gross. She was coughing. Oh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> just, just please don't. 
She was also coughing. Yeah, we got that. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I've been fortunate that everybody that's come to our studio, there's there's been no, I mean, in general, the people that we tattoo are not the kind of Mine people too. we have to worry about. Yeah, yeah. same here. But, you know, even the very few locals, and, you know, we're in rural America here. This is not where people wear masks, but the few locals that, that have been by the studio, they see we're doing it. And, they'll, you know, if they don't have a mask, they'll take their red bandana and wrap it around their face. They've been very respectful. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, you know, even though we've been allowed to reopen, um, we're trying to just keep our numbers to a minimum and like just one guy at the shop at a time um, with only their client and that's it. And, you know, just try to reduce risk as much as humanly possible. I felt sick on uh, Saturday. I woke up and had a bit of a headache and felt a little congested. And I called my appointment and said, sorry, man, um, but I, I can't take the risk. Told the guys um, I felt great today. You know, I, I'm fine. But yeah, that's yeah, a, can't take totally, the risk. Yeah, not worth it. Prostitutes Never gonna be in worth my it. neighborhood are quite busy. <laughs> I bet <laughs> they are. It's weird. You'd think that you know they were. Well, I guess they can't wear masks, but it's just really awful. Yeah, that they're out there with them because they've got probably very little choice. Um, no, no. they do. Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't have brought that in. <sighs> so, yeah, I think it's, uh, I have a hard time staying on really big paintings, like, uh, or, you know, when I say big, I mean like what Leo's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's without, huge. You know, sometimes, sometimes I'll have to s sort of step away for a few days and work on something else, kind of just mm -hmm. clear my, my head out, come back to it. But then there comes that point where it gets obsessive, you know, and <laughs> you're trying to sit and enjoy a movie and you're thinking about your painting. That's where I'm at. <laughs> But I don't usually paint this big. Really? Yeah, I usually keep it to like 16 by 20 or 18 by 24 at the, at the biggest. Oh, wow. Like I kind of thought most of your stuff seemed like it was on the big scale, like what you're doing right now. Not at all. <clears throat> Detail-wise, it has that, that uh, appearance, though. Yeah. Yeah, you see it and you say that must be very large for the amount of detail that's in there. But that's oil, right? You can really get the detail in there with that. Yeah. Nice. It's beautiful. I'm Thank showing you. off Kaya's again. I think she's uh she might be taking a break after this. No, I'm no? still okay. gonna do more. <laughs> I mean I'm going for it. Got it's the, fun. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm blocked in. Yeah, looking great. That's gorgeous. The colors are so nice. yeah got that right. iridescent going yeah for sure oh. you got some iridescent paint no it's just white and uh a mix of other colors basically just white layered on other colors that can i do have iridescent paint but i'm not using it nice. it's just like i white. like, I like it's just this kind of color shift i love that Mm, interesting well okay and when when you say color shift uh you know i mean really that is that is the whole essence of iridescence is you're seeing the the colors sort of you know spectrum out in different directions uh you know yeah. you'll have a blue that will have a little bit of turquoise at one edge a little bit of lavender at one edge and that lavender might even go off into a little pink uh but but it's not sudden transitions. It's all gradual. It's the, it's this sort of. Is it like a depending on where you're looking at it from kind of thing that it kind of shifts? Well, okay. Picture uh -huh. an oil slick. Yeah. Okay, so that oil slick. The reason it looks rainbowy, 
is because it's extremely thin. It's thin enough that it is what approximately, it's like one wavelength of, of light thick. And mm -hmm. the variation in that thickness of that oil slick, it'll take it up into the reds or down into the blues or various places in between. But that the thickness of the oil slick happens gradually. You know what I mean? When it goes from thick to thin, it happens yeah. gradually. And so the, the, the variations in the thickness of that oil sheen all are transitioning smoothly into each other. And so then the, the color of light that they happen to interfere or support at any given place is going to be like the neighboring color on the spectrum to the spot next to it. So it ends up having this, this rainbow sheen. Mm -hmm. It all has to do with the thickness of the oil slick. That's cool. Light refraction is such a wild phenomenon. Makes some beautiful stuff. Yeah, and just the, the whole idea that color actually doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's yeah. a thing that we make up in our heads to try to understand wavelengths of light. And that's why there's yeah. color blindness, because it's actually just like our heads. Well, I mean, it's not just that. I mean, like my color blindness has to do with a shortage of a certain cones. Right. The cones. You've got short cones? <laughs> <laughs> I got short cones, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got such terrible eyesight. I'm just I'm grateful that, yeah, I, I like, uh, it's awesome that you can see enough to do the amazing stuff she that you do, it. though. I think that She's when you see... Cool. When you see differently from other people, you can it's be like a superpower. well. It can be either a strength or a weakness, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for example, the lack of binocular vision uh, means that I'm getting the flat movie version of life, right? And to me, that's the only way I know it. Like when I go to a yeah. 3D movie and I put on the glasses, it turns into a regular movie for me, right? Huh. Um, wild, Same. right? And so, so if you were to wear three D glasses, would you be able to like see three D a little? No, no. You'd need to have both your eyes working together in order to get that the parallax effect. And you basically only have one eye. Correct. <laughs> what if you put on two pairs of three D glasses? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, three pairs. <laughs> and it'll truly be three dimensional. <laughs> But, you know, I'm not complaining because I think the end result of that is that I have to think about depth because mm -hmm. I don't live in a hologram, right? I have to think about it and I have to be aware of it in ways that I think you muggles don't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's been to my advantage as an artist. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff that happens to our bodies that... that uh are automatically played off as disadvantages, but that if you just kind of take a different look at them, they can be huge advantages. Well, anything that makes you different could yeah. potentially be uh, a plus. Totally. Entirely what you make out of it. Exactly. I'm just going to show mine for like any suggestions. Do okay. you like, do any of you have suggestions on what I could add to my? Well, I, I have one suggestion. What? My one suggestion would be to use a tiny little bit of black to sort of get underneath the chin here Ooh, yeah. to bring the head out and maybe even a little bit of a darker uh, purple or red drop shadow under the head to just mm. pop Nice. It out. That's a good suggestion. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Mm. Awesome. My daughter is actually taking my suggestions and saying they're good. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. <laughs> exactly. Usually, when he has suggestions, I don't take them. No, <laughs> usually, my Almost suggestions like have something. <laughs> they often have something to do with the mess on her floor or whatever. So she doesn't yeah. have suggestions. 
The beauty of parenthood. So we've got Seth is coming in on here. Hey, Seth. I was uh, hoping we'd see Gabriel Cease here tonight. Uh, Cause I just saw that he uh, subscribed recently. So keep an eye out for him. I don't know if, uh, who else here was involved in, was there anyone here involved in the interstate thing? Years ago, Michelle and I did this interstate live painting performance. I think I just watched something about it. I think if there's anybody in the here. group here. Uh -huh. but yeah, he's an interstate alma mater. Mm -hmm. well, and I'm guessing my brother might have had Zoom difficulties. And of course, Zoom difficulties can be had. Um, <laughs> and everything has to do with Zoom. Well, right now, <laughs> everything has to do with freaking Zoom. It's true. <laughs> they have towns that exist because of Zoom. <laughs> this town I'm in might become one. Really? Yeah. I, I'm actually kind of uh, at a loss for words. I've really been looking up to... Uh, y'all for a long time I'm not really sure how to take this hopefully my opinion is good enough to be on here well um, I'm looking at it right now nice it's scary, it's scary. <laughs> you're painting big I've been painting oh wow is that like three by three or four by four feet there it's about uh, two by by three or so three and a half okay. yeah that is big. It's a pretty good. And then I have a bigger one behind it that I did a while, a while back. I've been trying to, uh, I look up to a lot of people like Jeff Goway and you oh, yeah. and Judy Parker. I, I'm actually, I've looked up to you since I started tattooing probably 15 years ago. <laughs> right on. Well, I'm glad you could make it here. Be part of this party. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, Jeff is I appreciate a... I'm not, not a mermaid. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Mine isn't really either, but it's inspired by mermaids a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jeff is a guy, Jeff Gogway. He, uh, um, when he is in the painting zone, I know he goes through periods of time when he's not, his tattooing sometimes does that to you. But he's a super prolific painter. He does a lot of large pieces. I don't paint large very often. Like a, a two by three foot painting for me is large. And uh, yeah, it's it's just hard for me to do them quick. Not that I need to do them quick, yeah. but uh, you know, I feel like I need to build up to the larger pieces. Like I'll I'll develop my ideas for a while, and and after a year of messing around with with certain motifs or whatever, I'll start feeling like it's time to do a big one. Yeah. yeah like, how long do those big like mine tree paintings take, guy? Oh man, you know, I mean, we're probably looking at the kinds of hours that you're uh, that you're investing into your, you know, really detailed pieces. Uh, you know, as as with your case, uh, I don't keep track specifically. Yeah. All right, Anyone yeah. feel free to. Uh, for okay, I want to more attack. suggestions. So I, I like the, the drop shadow. Ooh, under the I like that. The shadow. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah that really that, did it. That, okay, so this, this white area at the top of this fin, as it comes up to the face, maybe if this drop shadow just got brought around hmm, the face yeah, you're right. to just separate the, uh, the face from the fin. I'm always trying to look at the value of neighboring shapes and, and trying to separate them out from each other. She's getting more for her allowance by saying, yeah, great idea, Dad. <laughs> he doesn't need an allowance. She's been doing dog portraits for 20 bucks a pop. and She's got people lining Ooh. up on the block for him. Yeah. Right now. I, I, I couldn't start earning money till I was like 12 and I could mow a lawn. Yeah. yeah. Yep, we had a push mom. I'm from Arizona, and we didn't mow lawns. We moved rocks. <laughs> ah, even better. Uh, <laughs> in the hot sun. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm missing 100 well, degrees. It's a dry heat. <laughs> Go move the rocks. <laughs> right. 
I'm actually from Flagstaff, Arizona. It was really much more colder there than most oh, places. Oh, yeah, yeah, there. yeah. Oh, yeah, Flagstaff is a beautiful place. I like it there. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. All yeah, right, I got shit all the way around. I think I'm going to take a break. You're going to take a break? All right. Okay, that looks terrific. Good job. Good job. Yeah, she stayed nice and focused on that, too. Yeah, that's awesome. How, how old is she? She's nine. My daughter nine. just turned nine yesterday. Nice. Wow. Cool. Happy birthday. Uh, does she do art? She does a lot of drawings, but I probably haven't quite got her to the point. You have your daughter. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> well, I don't have her there. She has her there. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, you know, here's, here's what I would say, uh, if I had any advice at all, is um, make sure she has a nice set up somewhere that her materials and supplies are uh, readily available and laid out in a way that is attractive and appealing. And every week or two, take a minute to refresh it, you know, make sure that there's some canvases or whatever there. And that, you know, and, and of course it's, it's her job to keep it from turning into a pigsty and everything, but it's our right. job. We've found that every time we take a minute to, to sort of, you know, update and refresh, Kaya's uh, art station. She's actually got a few art stations. But when that happens, all of a sudden she's back to painting more again. Mm. So, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. To I get her new stuff to draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I, I would love it if somebody would come and do that to my workspace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd probably use it more to. Yeah, when you don't have to clean something up before you can use it again, it definitely makes you want to use it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've always tried really hard to uh, clean up my, uh, my tattoo station before calling it a night, even if it's three in the morning you know yeah okay I'll take yeah that's really hard to do yeah. just like washing dishes yeah 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 that's that's even uh, harder to do <laughs> well yeah usually that doesn't have to happen at, at three in the morning but, yeah. uh, but i'll tell you what though it's it's so nice to come out there uh, you know for your next work day and there's not garbage everywhere mm -hmm. so uh yeah. I am going to have to take a short intermission here. Um, daughter is calling it a night, and uh, I have a, a brief nighttime ritual that I'm going to attend to. And then I'm going to be rejoining you guys in a few minutes. Okay. Um, but you seem to have the party rolling without me, so uh, I look forward to seeing you guys shortly. Wonderful. I'm going to take a brief break, too, to make some dinner. Nice. Uh, hopefully you guys are still here when I... When I'm done. That was fun. Thanks for letting me join I, in. I think I've got another hour of painting here, you know, realistically. So, yeah, I'll definitely be back. Nice. Okay. See you guys. Well. Hi, Melissa. So, Judy... Yes. I uh, actually seen one of your tattoos for the first time. Uh, it was a long time ago. Oh, well, not a long time ago. It's probably about yes. 14 yes. or 15 years ago on a guy I worked with. His name is Kelly Kirkland. I don't know if you remember. Oh, him. Kelly Kirkland. Did you see his neck? You mean that skull on his neck? The, the skull on his neck? That, that was recent. That sh was done, wasn't it? No, that was a real long time ago. It was good okay, because yeah. you wouldn't quit talking until I did that right on his hand. Oh boy, <laughs> that shut him up right now. <laughs> uh, you did his sleeve you. also, didn't you? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really big mermaid on his sleeve. He said he yeah, told me you did. Yeah. I did. Oh, yes, nice. It was awesome. Very, very yeah. awesome. Especially for when I came into the industry then it was there was not many, you didn't see many good tattoos. Yeah, 
you see Cat a lot eyes. of like not so good tattoos. So that was really awesome. Oh, oh thank you very much. Oh, jeez. Sorry, <laughs> guys. Painting just uh, got stomped on by a cat. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. You can't leave your paintings laying around with cats. That's for sure. Because they oh, love them. I do. He did early, He did say that he thought a cat was probably uh, as hard to deal with as a dog. He was talking smack on a cat, and you know what happens. And yeah. a cat will come. <laughs> You think they're not listening, but they are. They're listening. <laughs> yeah, I have a hairless cat. She, she listens Ooh. to everything. Awesome. At least you don't get hair in anything. Yes, that that is a very good benefit. Except yeah. for she's, except for she smells like a potato when she gets she hot. Smells like a potato. <laughs> 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 that is weird. Um, yeah. I never heard that about those guys. That's hilarious. Yeah. She's like a little monkey. She uh -huh. likes to stand on your shoulders. But so in the winter, she likes to hide under blankets. She gets real sweaty. And when she comes out, she she kind of has like a dirty type potato smell to her. Like when you take a <laughs> potato out of it. That's just awful. <laughs> That's so yeah. funny. Oh my goodness. I never knew that about them. Yeah, me neither. Potato. I would name it Potato then. Yeah. Yeah. Her name's her name is Bones. Oh, Bones. That's a good name for him too. Bones. We never even considered getting one. I just happened to have a customer that wanted a tattoo, and she, she had it. So we ended up trading wow that's really great awesome. the barter system's coming back trust me oh, oh, oh yeah i <laughs> do it as much as i can yep yeah same here it's, it's beneficial for both parties i think definitely one time i i, I you, you ever have these guys a long time ago guys used to come to the door and they'd be selling stuff yeah, you know, yeah. like door to door salesmen. Yeah, uh, like we... vacuums and stuff. <laughs> well, uh, and and knife sets. And back in the day when they had those, um, when they had those uh, recorders, you know, the you know, the old fashioned kind of recorder. Uh, what's yeah. it called? V not, yeah, VHS. Uh, yeah. So some guys came in there like we got a deal it's a great deal and it just fell off the truck you know what i mean and yeah. uh, <laughs> literally <laughs> and i bought a vcr back in the days when they cost like 700 dollars for 50 bucks so i was like oh <laughs> it, that's good yeah. and it was all sealed so we were sure that it was a-okay yeah. no i spent 50 yeah. bucks on the nicest brick you ever saw <gasps> oh, oh come no. on <laughs> Great lesson that uh, was. Oh, uh, that, that's a, a sealed up brick. What a it wow. was sealed in the in the wrapping, you know, the wrapper. So they yeah. used it to seal anything. It was cool. That Somebody was had a cellophane uh, uh, sealer Shrink. machine. Yeah, exactly. that, machine. <laughs> that was state of the art then, wasn't it? I love yeah, getting exactly. a good scam as long as it didn't cost me too much. <laughs> yeah that's true you do learn as long as you learn after that yeah. yeah we we used to have people come to the tattoo shop and try to sell us supplies from hobby lobby and stuff and you wonder why they're trying to sell you a whole 150 dollar set of prisma colors for like 40 or 50 dollars i got them for 20 bucks you didn't have the same guy <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> man, man. <laughs> they 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 knew the market, I guess. In the right yeah, place. Yeah. You bet. <laughs> That's in Austin though, so you do it everywhere. Yeah. Okay. But now you don't see it very much because you know, COVID. Yeah, yeah. People don't get out very much. Now people just 
harass you on online stuff. <laughs> you can, yeah, yeah, I get phone calls and all the time. Yeah. Text messages. Yeah. I get an awful lot of things on my computer from like Square and from uh, uh, PayPal and Bank of America, all trying to scam me, you know? I don't know. That stuff's all real. The the phone calls that you get about your social security number are the funniest things. Oh, yeah. All kinds of great tricks. It's good to, that people are kind enough often to, to warn you about the tricks, the yes. latest trick they're trying to pull off. Yes. Yeah. When they call about my social security number, I just laugh at them. <laughs> Some friend of mine said that she keeps them on the phone. Tell them all yeah. their, their daily junk, you know, stuff that nobody wants to listen to. <laughs> right. Yes, because they're I not think... supposed to hang up on you, apparently. So if you just keep them on there, they're very, just... it's like looks bad for them on their, when people are watching their stuff, if they hang up mm. on you. So <laughs> you can yeah. them on forever. I never thought about that. That makes yeah. sense. Because in the offices or they little call centers, they make you they have a certain amount of time you're supposed to be on the phone. Yeah. With each person. Yeah. So you're gonna sell that their painting that uh the it's, it's a fantasy. It's a fan fantasy kind of lion. Oh, the uh, manticore. Um, it's incredible. from a game. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll probably. Cool. It, I don't know that it'll sell, but <laughs> I would buy it if I could. <laughs> that is incredible. Yours is incredible too. I like your evilness. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate. It. <laughs> Evil is a whole whole. A whole fun thing, you know, going to yeah. the dark side and seeing your dark stuff. Guys really like doing skulls. I'm not so good at skulls. That's you should have guy. a skull lesson. Yeah, we should. That'd be awesome. Yeah, hey, that'd be great. great. I would love yeah, to be a part uh, of that one. Uh, I do a lot of skulls. Sean Barber was on here. He was one of the first. Who was? Uh, Sean Barber was on here uh, doing when we were doing the virtual uh -huh. tattoo gathering. He was one of the first uh, painting. Uh, seminars we had and um, yeah it was a big skull it was pretty epic big skull. Wow. yeah oh, yeah <laughs> amazing i would love to be a part of that that's yeah. one you'd there's have to get the, jeff on there's still the replays on there uh i think on oh i'm not I, I, maybe on the tattoo television uh i'm not actually sure exactly where that one ended up but there are replays available i'll have to go look at that all things <laughs> Yeah. No, Tavon Jeff Krieger's joining us as well. Awesome. Who? Tavon Krieger. He's one of our regulars. Oh, oh excellent. Is he jumping on? Yep. I think he's. Oh, there we go. Hi, Tavon. Is this something that's done every Sunday or is it, I mean, I've seen a few of them. Um, we are doing uh, drawing exercises every Monday. We're doing at least one paint night every month, um, which didn't generally falls onto a Sunday, um, but we're trying to continue like adding on to that. And I think we might be having one next week as well, but it's just trying to confirm with everybody. Is it is it going to be the same link or is it a different type of link every time? Um, it'll be a different uh, Zoom link likely every time. Um, uh -huh. But uh, you'll just keep going to reinventingthetattoo.com. If you um, 
head to the uh, re do, do you use Instagram? I do use Instagram. And if you follow uh, the reinventing the tattoo uh, Instagram, then we just keep uh, updating about all the events. We're going to have like pretty much a full week this week. I think other than Friday, Saturday, every day is got at least one event. Um, and so, some of the days have two or three. It's a pretty busy one. <laughs> Good. That's really cool. I'm, I've been seeing a few of them. And... <laughs> Where have I you been it... finding uh, most of them so far? There, I mean, I just see a few. Most of the time I'm tattooing or something, so I don't really get a chance to watch them throughout but i know the artists and all everybody all everybody that's on your page is somebody i've looked up to for a long time awesome and, and, and are amazing and in my opinion tattoo education i think is awesome because it's something that the world or i guess people haven't got much of they're still slowly getting to see that artists are more or tattoo artists are considered more artists than just somebody who can just do like something I don't know. Sure. I try to. I'm trying to change that in the small town I'm in now. There's a lot of people that don't understand that the side of the industry, the better side of it. Yeah, where whereabouts are you? I'm in uh, East Texas. Um, mm -hmm. Pal it's called Palestine, Texas. It's a really small town, kind of outside of Tyler, Texas, where. Kelly Tattoo is actually the guy I was talking about earlier. He owns a tattoo you shop there. Tell him up. <laughs> <laughs> Tavon, that's like uh, that's looking sweet. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough so far, but on the spotlight, you can just go cool. and check it out. Cool. That's sweet. She's kind of evilly. Awesome. Yeah. More like a siren. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what they are, technically. They're not little mermaids, you know. They're evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, have, yeah, they are. They're, they're beautiful and scary all at the same time. Yeah. It's the only way they lure the guys to their grave. <laughs> they're doomed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lonely sailors. I did a picture of a of one and he's the mermaids, there's two mermaids dragging a sailor down and he's smiling. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. I don't care. I guess All that would right. be a good way to <laughs> You've gotta go. <laughs> yeah. There's a TV show that my wife was watching. It's called Siren. It's a really cool concept um, hmm. about uh, mermaids. Is uh, they are kind of primitive, but they can learn how to be more human-like. One deals with the humans and starts trying to get help from them. But it's uh, if you haven't seen it, it'd be something to check out if you like mermaids. It was actually really cool. I saw that for a minute, but I don't know. I was too creepy. It was pretty creepy. I, I, the <laughs> mermaids are definitely different in the water versus outside. It, they look more human or actually human outside of the water, but in the water, they're pretty crazy looking. I like them to be creepy. <laughs> yeah. I do. I like to go from good to bad. I really do. In art, it's fun. That's what but, I like about so. Jeff. <laughs> Sorry. No, I interrupted you almost. Go on. So uh, Gabe's in the comments saying that next Sunday is Nick Baxter. So oh. I wasn't sure about oh. uh, it being uh, confirmed, but if, awesome. if Gabe's saying it must be confirmed. So Nick Baxter is going to be doing uh, landscapes with us. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. I'll have to be a part of that. Yeah. Nick is in yeah. Austin. Oh, nice. He is amazing. <laughs> His paintings are crazy. Yeah. 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 And His tattoos are nice, just like, as crazy. Beautiful, uh, 
beautiful landscapes uh, lately. And so that's kind of what we're going to be concentrating wow. on. Wow. Yeah. Uh, too cool. Go on, uh. I, I called Nick Baxter a long time ago and asked him how he did some of the good tattoos. <laughs> nice. When I was being fan, when I was fangirl. <laughs> what did he tell you? Mm-hmm. Give us the tips he gave you. <laughs> wow, my <laughs> my brushes are definitely just freaking out right now. They're just all splaying out. I don't know, maybe I'm not supposed to be using. It's like we were talking about the different uh, paintbrushes at the beginning, Judy, about the how paint some of them are really good, though. Or, Oh, thank you. Is she going to have hairs? Um, I was thinking about just kind of giving her scales to kind of come over instead. Um, and then having the flow coming from the uh, the fish, t- the like fishy tail that comes up afterwards. But yeah, my my brush that I'm doing tiny detail with is just giving up Not the ghost. <laughs> like, you I know, I like that. I like that movie. Um, uh, the the what is it called? The the something of water. Shape you know water. that one? The shape, shape of water. water. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that character. He was so cool. So well designed. Yeah, I that one, but I heard a lot of good things about it. I love well, anything Guillermo del Toro does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And it'd be pretty cool. He was the but guy that did, like, hands What's up? Um, did he do Pan's Labyrinth? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He, the yes. artist who did the artwork on that character, the main character, was so good. I just loved it. I, I oh, painted that one. I loved it so much. Nice. Awesome. Wow. Is oh, it called, it's called The Shape of Water? Yeah. yeah. Is it creepy? Um, it's, it's, dark. Love, it's, it's like a dark love story. Okay. It is. It's beautiful. It's like Mr. Limpid, actually. Okay. Yes. I it's it's not that. over. It's not overly scary or dark. You know, it's got some it's weird, some creepy, th- you know, creepiness to it. But it's not overly. It's not a horror movie. Okay. Perfect. I just can't. If you watch, horror, so. if, you watch <laughs> if you watch Splash just before it, you know the the movie Splash with uh, Han- yeah. Daryl Hannah. It's yeah. the same movie. It's the it's same. Exactly- <laughs> It's the same movie, only it's the dark side of that. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's great. Is it just us guys? There's like one, two, three, four people that I saw their art so far. Is that it? Um, we've got, there's seven of us here. Well, Guy's not here, so there's six of us here right now. Um, Melissa's here. Uh, we probably haven't gotten to see her art. So Melissa, I'm going to spotlight yours. Um, yeah. Melissa's been working on hers. Oh, cool. She did uh, the portraits with Rain Del Mar. And so she's just been like adding to it and adding to it, and it's getting more and more epic. It's like oh, that's cool. M- what's her name? Uh, Malef- Maleficent, Maleficent, kind of. Yeah. Hey guys. <laughs> hey. I was trying to get to the button that allowed me to unmute, and it was a little hard with the way my <laughs> phone's being held. <laughs> yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, great. I was. Uh, I was gonna do some mermaid stuff but i ran out of time between tattoo client stuff and home so i was like yeah let's just work on this tonight (laughs) (laughs) um so i do have something um judy you worked on 
my hubby. He has a piece from you. Um, trying to remember what year he said. <laughs> it's on his upper shoulder. He was, I believe he was at Sturgis. Oh. Who did it? It's a black and gray mermaid. Oh. Um, let me grab him real, fa- real fast. Hi. Keep grabbing him. It'll be a few minutes for him. He's cooking latkes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yum>. What? Latke. <laughs> so, yeah, he. Uh, they're both Jewish. Uh, him and his son. Um, so it's one of the Hanukkah nights for them. Oh, oh. cool. So what are they making? Latkes. What is? Potato pancakes. Yeah. Oh, I like those. <laughs> they're really, really good. <laughs> yeah. What do you have with them? Um. So you can do like jam or jelly but you can also do like sour cream yum and they're amazing like fried potato pancakes <clears throat> yeah uh, my mom makes german ones and uh you have uh applesauce with them Ah, uh, that's the other yeah. yeah yeah nice i love the applesauce or leek leek sauce is also a good one oh i haven't tried that yeah i didn't like it when i was little but I like it now. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> We're not wearing our mask. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> my shirt that says um it says uh stand what stand at a safe distance nice that's yeah. my walmart shirt that's a Nobody good, really a good shirt to have i've seen like masks where people have uh it says on the mask like if you can read this you're too close or something yep like, i got that shirt too nice <laughs> yeah it's good to have on a mask yeah I'm curious. I mean, I've never done a painting and then had to do a painting over again. That's an interesting, <laughs> you know, uh, underpainting. There's they were yeah. saying. I was like, I've never done oh. that. I don't know what I'm doing. I never got trained. <laughs> that's probably what I do all the time because I'm too lazy to finish it when I work when I start it. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Are you you're doing the two paintings? I, I mean, you're doing it twice. I usually well, lay down like a, a thin acrylic as an underpainting and it just helps me to kind of work out value before I get committed to the oils. So, you know, I can put all my, and, and, it, and it's still very, it, it doesn't, from the camera, it doesn't look loose, but if you look at it in person, it, it is really loose. I, I paint it real thin, almost like, oh, yeah. it's, it's acrylic, but it's almost like watercolor. And I just work out all my shade, all my highlights, um, and then it sounds like it's more work. Changed? What's up? 
Are you professionally trained? No, no. I'm. Uh, Looks like it. Well, I'm. I'm. I'm I, I never went to school for it, but I've attended a lot of symposiums and, and uh, I go out to this thing called Ilixcon every year out in Pennsylvania. It's a fantasy art um, oh, yeah. kind of convention symposium thing. And they've got lots of like all my art heroes are there and a lot of them are doing demos or even just at their booth painting. And I'll just camp right next to them and <laughs> ask them questions the whole way and just watch what they do and try to put new tools in the tool belt basically you know so that's where I, I learned to do the underpainting stuff oh well, um, that's beautiful thank you it sounds like it's or it seems like it's more work like you're doing two paintings but in the long run I feel like it, it cuts down on a lot of uh, guesswork once you're actually committed to the oil painting Mm -hmm. um, you've kind of worked out a lot of your problems prior to actually committing to the final painting, you know? So mm -hmm. it, in a way it kind of, I, I think it, it, it's, it's well worth the extra time. I think it saves time in the long run, basically is what I'm trying to say. So you know, cool. Darren White? That name sounds totally familiar. He gave me my only lesson in oil paint and I was so fascinated but he lives on the other side of the United States so I don't get to see him uh where is he at um I think he's in Florida now okay he's just a wonderful painter but well, I tell a lot you, of people are. I'll tell you I cut my teeth uh tattooing with your flash Sorry. Like, you know, 94, that's, that's what, uh, before I got the confidence to do my own thing, I was doing Judy Parker flash all day long, man. That stuff just sold oh. out the door. That's awesome. So I've got Judy. my grumbly old man here. Oh. <laughs> Judy Parker and David Bolt. I think it was David Bolt, right? What about David Bolt? Didn't he have a lot of flash <laughs> like that? Uh, so different. As I, I said earlier, we've got, the, we've got Melissa's partner here who's going to show the tattoo that you did on him. Uh oh. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. Oh, you cool. had, oh. had boobies hidden. Oh. <laughs> I'm at my first trip to Sturgis and I'm looking at a thousand tattoo artists and I keep coming to the same flash every site that I like. The last guy that I looked at looks at me and goes, why would I want to do it when you can go next door and talk to yourself? I think I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Good to uh, see you. Then <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Impatient doggo, sorry. <laughs> this was probably on maybe a Tuesday. Well, she's booked out. I went down and saw her more times than I can remember. It had to have been two or three times a day for the next four or five days. <laughs> and she has no openings. Then at 11.30 on a Saturday night, she gives me a call. She goes, I just had a cancellation. How could you be there? So I ran in and it took me about half an hour to get there. And I got this. She, uh, at the time I had uh, nothing. I, wow, I, look I, at you now. Oh, <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, a little bit, a lot on my legs. Uh, Melissa has done quite a bit, but uh, a month after Sturgis, Judy, you told me if I was ever in the area of your shop to stop on by. Yeah. I was a long haul truck driver at the time and I did a delivery down to Coke warehouse and uh, you ended up doing another two or three hours of working on this. Um, <laughs> well, keep coming. 
<laughs> and, and then fast forward, I stopped in and saw you, I don't know, it was about 10, 12 mm. years ago. I was in a club at the time, not when I got the tattoo from you, but when I stopped in. Um, and in a biker club? Yeah. Oh, cool. I spent, I spent about 12 years in a club. Um, but Melissa had told me that you were uh, doing a painting jam and I wanted a chance to say hi. I married my artist. Nice to see you. Right <laughs> on. You know, she's currently doing this on me. No oh. wonder you got too much. <laughs> <laughs> that thing feels great under there, huh? <laughs> he was oh. growling at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That was absolutely a wonderful spot to get. <laughs> My husband won't let me tattoo on him anymore. He says it hurts too much. <laughs> I've got way too much open space left. Um, she did this cover up. Uh, she started on it uh, about six months ago. It's hard to see. You've got to put it closer to the camera. I, oh bit. yeah, there you go. Ooh, it's a dragony. <sighs> Excellent. Oh, nice. I saw that on the on the Instagram the other day. That's awesome. Excellent. That's looking great. Nice work yeah. there, Missy. Thank you. Not to include the you know the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she had this piece of art up in her studio, the first studio, and then her shop now that. A whole bunch of art, a whole bunch of clients, you know, always, I am interested, I am interested, I am interested in nothing. So one day I said, okay, tattoo a pissed off toilet on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> she won't let me show it. It's on my legs. She's going to drop those drawers and we're on live feed. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna so rotate. The, the imagery is uh, is pretty funny, even just the thought of it. So <laughs> thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, he uh, he wanted to say hi the last time, but <clears throat> technical difficulties, all that kind of good stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Talk about like, it, you better let me say hi this Ouch. time. <laughs> you too. That's awesome. It's always nice to see stuff how it healed up and hear about Years how you're enjoying it. Yeah. As long as nobody's mad. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, if they're mad, you just have to try to fix it. Yeah. I know. That's a lie, too. Judy, thanks for letting me babble for a minute. It was an honor having you work on me and having uh, Melissa doing this paint jam with you is really cool. Oh, yeah. thanks so much. Thank you. you. Know, I, and nice to see you. And Merry Christmas. And Merry <laughs> Christmas. Um, I need to go back to cooking latkes. <laughs> yes, we send, those latkes. Latkes. send me one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be a hilarious thing to get in the mail. Just yes. Pancake. <laughs> I wonder how good it'd be. Yeah. You know, if it was fast enough mail, it might be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Someday they'll have an oven that has all the ingredients you need in it, and you just have to put the the recipe in there, and it'll make whatever you want. They actually have these two arms robots, you know, and that's why I'm saying that they're probably going to do that. They have these robot hands, and so the chef cooks a meal, right? And he's got mm -hmm. he's got uh, these little things on his fingers and everything, and you know the little like. Uh, 
what are they called? You know, they're, they're like gloves with electronics on it that records every move he makes. And oh, now right. those, those arms can literally cook you that same meal that he's making. Holy crap. And it's from like a Look different it location, <laughs> from like a different location. So if they're like well, yeah. doing it. In... Like, you could, like you could press a button and he has like, I mean, the one I saw, it comes out of the bottom of a cabinet, like your cabinets on your kitchen surface, cook service, you know, and mm -hmm. they're on tracks and they can move back and forth and they, they can even shake out just the same amount of, you know, herbs or whatever that, that he's putting in the meal. It's just amazing. Uh, this is well, then you can, so crazy. <laughs> then yeah. with that, with that, you can probably tattoo somebody in another state from your living room. <laughs> well, you could also record it. The problem is with tattooing is you have to know the depth on the skin and, and yeah, feel, the, yeah. feel the skin. Yeah, so true. I don't think that would work on that one. But it would cook yeah, you any sense. meal that you wanted that is in the repertoire that it has. Wow. Which wow. I think is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Have filet mignon tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What, one more thing to make us a little more lazy. Of course. We're I thought by the end of my life it would be like the Jetsons. Yeah. yeah. Or like Star well, maybe Trek have the um, replicators. Oh, yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it can just help you focus on one other thing more and you don't have to focus on trying to make dinner. Yeah, exactly. True, true. true. Spend That's more the time. excuse for all that. <laughs> yeah we well, gotta look for some good in it right, right. i'll be tell, out on my hovercraft <laughs> yeah well i tell people there's gonna probably be a day when they create a way to make a computer do a tattoo which i'm not looking forward to but they can, can make it so we can yeah. still create yeah. they have done a couple haven't they i've yeah. seen a few different things there's just no soul in that, man. Yeah, no. I agree. It, well, that's why I was saying, like, if they did do something like that, I would like for it to be possible for me to completely create my ideas yeah. and allow the machine to do it. Because there's going to be a point, if they do do that, where people aren't going to want to do it traditionally. They're going to want to go through it. So if we can still find a way to incorporate artistic ability into the design product and make it the way we want, then that could be partially beneficial i still think it'd be better to just tattoo somebody physically it's, well there's still people that tattoo. are going to different countries and stuff to get very traditional tattoos that have been around for thousands of years so i feel like we'll be yeah. still very much still be room necessary. for it. <laughs> yeah i hope so yeah i like my kids to do it the same way i do if they do and decide to pursue it tattooing I gotta say, painting like this is a little easier to get motivated if we paint with other people, awesome. especially people I look up to. I love to paint together. I think it's fun, and I'm learning from you guys. Looking at your stuff, yeah. I'll copy it all. Photographic memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I definitely like the way you started yours, Judy, where you had the blue for the background, but then you totally just painted it over her fin. And I was like, oh, interesting. I don't know what's going on. But then it's just like, oh, it's just, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of? And I don't, I don't know, want to, um, like the way Bob Ross paints. Oh, does it now? Well, Not just necessarily that. that. His, his well, is a real. I'm out of here. I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does a lot of over painting over. I've been watching a lot. I, I actually really like the way Bob Ross's paintings turn out. Oh, yeah. Bob Ross is super chill. But he figured out how to do them so fast. I'm ready. 
<laughs> I got my Bob Ross wig. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, like, Wait a minute, that wasn't her hair. <laughs> you, I'm taking it off, happy, but I do paint with that. <laughs> just put a happy little fin and just yeah. a nice little wisp. Okay, yeah, such a way of uh, making you feel relaxed and just, you know. And yeah. he was a drill instructor, which is what's so amazing. He was oh, a drill really? instructor. Yeah. Wow. And, that is and wild. Still, yeah. And he, talked so, he talked so softly. I, I was trying to get my son who has long, long hair and a beard. I was trying to get him to put the wig on. And I was writing the script for him, and he was going to be angry, Bob Ross. And you know how Bob Ross is all <laughs> mellow and everything? Yeah. <laughs> to have yeah. him, like, tear up the stuff and get crazy. That's awesome. Just to recommend him, him, him as a drill sergeant. Yeah. I, did, I could not see him as that either. I, that, that's awesome. I didn't even know. Now, now let's just that. get in line. Let's just get in line, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> stand at attention. Left. You're right. just being the Dickens. <laughs> Just 20 little happy push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it would have worked uh, much better. <laughs> than maybe. <yelling>. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, well, oh, found... well, Bob said so, so I should probably do yeah. it. And he said it real nice, like, too. I've had some customers really mad in shops I've worked at, and I just talked to them politely and their attitude normally changes. So I can see that being a possible way to make people do things. Totally. Yeah. You catch more flies with honey or whatnot. Yeah. Well, my dad always told me to treat people how I wanted to be treated. So even if they were treating me bad, I try to treat them respectfully. Yeah, that's good. I just shoot them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but just I'm in the hood. <laughs> I'm just start taking your advice. Yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> Sometimes you want to just get mad back. I know. I've been known for that. You can just pull out your happy little shotgun. And... <laughs> yep. Boy, it got quiet then. <laughs> I know. We're scared now. <laughs> the pizza me off. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean the Bob Ross comment, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so you're giving her pierced, she's a pierced mermaid? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always think of mermaids, uh, I don't always think of them, but I like to when I think about mermaids, I think about them after they've gotten the treasure and they're, oh. you know, they're, they're playing with their jewelry and their, their, <laughs> their shiny things, you know? I like that. I always oh. think we're like that. That's a great way. Yeah. You gotta add, like all women, you gotta, I don't even have given them pink piercing. Yeah. You have to um, talk to your paintings and it talks to me. That's the. Just don't put a barn in the middle of her forehead. <laughs> a what? A barn or. Oh, a little shack. <laughs> <laughs> just go over your whole painting with some trees. I do. I've done that. When I get. If I really don't like something I did, I paint right over it and do it all the time sadly I, more often than I would like <laughs> me and a friend of mine we actually took some old you know if you go to like a thrift store or something like that, you find an old painting that was really heavily painted that has a lot of thick pieces of paint on it it's like was somebody's original yeah some or like oh. it was in rough shape <laughs> I know that's horrible isn't it I like but to do just it on, a print. on a print. Yeah, you know, like you see, like I did one for my friend Sharon. She she had a picture of a a heron in the a heron in in a swampy area, like, and it was 
real pretty. I thought it was real pretty, but it was a print and it was a bad print. And she wanted a, um, an alligator coming after it. So I oh. put that in there. Oh, that's cool. cool. It's like adding the well, we just monsters in there. Right. Well, that's why I wanted to do some Bob Ross paintings. That's kind of what made why I've been watching my wife <laughs> suggested doing a version of them. But instead of just doing like a landscape, do a nice landscape and then hide like characters in the like Slender Man or some crazy type scary character in the woods, like Sasquatch or something like that. That could be mm -hmm. fun. But just if yeah. you use originals, somebody's original, yeah. can you imagine somebody watches you on, on some one of these little podcasts <laughs> or whatever they're called and they're going, oh my God, he's got my painting. And he's <laughs> You're ruining it. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about doing the whole painting myself and then incorporating that in there. So oh, they can be Hidden things. I love hidden things. Yeah, little small stuff like that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I like them in tattoos too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people say I hide things in their tattoos. I didn't hide on purpose. I know. But. You know, I did a painting just recently of a skull with a a, a little. Uh, I'm not good at skulls, and I so I wasn't enthusiastic about it until I put a. A octopus in it because I love octopus, right? Awesome. Yeah. And then yeah, after like I did that, somebody I showed it on Facebook and they go, "Oh, see the dancing lady in there?" And I was oh. like, "What?" And there was a dancing <laughs> lady in there, and so I named oh. it Dancing Lady. What a that's trip! Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Happy accident. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> that's so cool. I like the happy accidents idea. I actually try to use that in my tattoos when I do skulls and stuff to try to keep them more different and not so much like all the other ones and try not just to kind of do accidental shapes and dips and stuff to like, like not make a show on purpose. Most of the I time when I... Most of the time when I paint, I, uh, you know, I used to listen to music a lot or, or uh, put on movies or what have you, but I found that I've seen all the movies that I have. Um, I've listened to all the music that I, that I have. Mm -hmm. And so when I have stuff like that on, I'm not really paying attention to that stuff and it becomes more background mm -hmm. and I'm just hyper concentrating on my painting. So yeah. nowadays, most of the time when I'm painting um, by myself, I listen to audio books. Mm. And what it does oh, is I find that I'm paying attention to the audio book. And it's not that I'm not paying attention to what I'm painting, but because of m my time is also spent concentrating on the audio book, I find that I almost go into autopilot while I'm painting mm. in places and that's, that's cool. where most of the happy accidents happen is when I'm yeah. not thinking about it. And then I step away and go, oh, look, look, look at that, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I think it's more conducive to that kind of thing happening when I'm not hyper concentrating on what I'm doing. You know what I mean? That sure. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That would, yeah. Puts you in the flow way. state sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a really cool way to do it. I have to do that. And at the same time, you're learning about something else. Yep. Multitasking. I like to learn Spanish. <laughs> yeah. All right, I am back. Hello, everyone. Uh, what did I miss? Hey. <laughs> Quit talking about him, you guys. Uh -oh. <laughs> Everybody be quiet now. Um, I think I'm Melissa gonna... has joined us, and Tavon nice. and Seth, I think, has just nice. joined us as well. Excellent. Hey. Welcome aboard, everyone. Sandy's painting is coming along, too. That's looking really cool. Nice. I think I'm going to transition into oil right now. It's about that time. We saw your cat uh, <laughs> yeah. pot at your oh. painting there. 
Yeah, and it made me really glad that I'm not doing oil yet, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now that everyone's asleep, there's a lot less risk of... Uh, th this is the supposedly cat-free part of the house. Mm -hmm. You'd have had a cool oil painting all over the house. Yeah, yeah, it'd be... You know, you ever see that, <laughs> that book, Why Cats Paint? Uh -uh. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty pretty interesting. It's yeah, you you set up an easel with I don't know what kind of paints you can give a cat that aren't going to be toxic to it, but mm. yeah, you set this up for them, and a certain percentage of cats will go up to it and say, "Oh, cool," and just start painting. Oh, really? I'm not making Why? that up. That's so cool. I want to set up Why Cats Paint. Yeah. That my cat would paint. <laughs> That's so cool. My cat's paint. Okay. So since this is a small enough panel here, eight by eight inches, I think I'm just gonna go totally wet on wet with this. Just cover the whole thing with liquid and uh paint into it do you use uh so you use the regular liquid um, oh yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. uh i guess this is the the slow dry it's standard uh, yeah. i use uh liquid fine detail and it's not so it's not more like a gel like that is it's more uh kind of like a, a syrup or like a, a honey mm -hmm. like consistency yep, yep. We, we've had that before too yep it uh <laughs> Is it uh, a little bit slower drying, or what else is different about it? Anything? I don't know. I've never used the the stuff that you're using. I've never used the the, the straight liquid. Okay. So I don't know that. I would imagine they probably have the same kind of drying properties. It's just the consistency is different. Yeah, I should try it because, uh, I mean, I, I know I've tried it in the past, but now that I've been using it for most paintings, I probably could have a a better chance of judging it fairly mm -hmm. but uh you know liquid is just a little sticky which i don't mind you know it's uh it grabs the paint off your brush but uh it definitely is not as smooth as painting with linseed oil mm. but linseed oil sometimes dries with disappointing results i've i've kind of written it off because it's ruined some paintings of mine oh shoot um it heats the problems it? what's that you couldn't paint over it well no the problem that i was having was uh especially when it came to certain um pigments that i was painting over Let, you know let's say i'd done an underpainting uh containing light blues and even if i had done oil painting uh, a layer below it with uh, with light blues something about that particular spectrum of color uh just the oil would uh, often after it was dried quote unquote dried would uh over the course of months or even years slowly gather into these little brown gobs all over the surface of the, the canvas Whoa. which is terribly yeah. disappointing you that when you, happen. That's uh, super weird. yeah and it just feels like uh like alkids in general are are a much more um certain you know what i mean like like it, they dry into this hard plastic kind of surface mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like it's gonna have any risk of months or years later still acting and reacting you know mm -hmm. well, that's definitely not what you want <laughs> something reacting no. later yeah like later down the road i don't After know if i've done enough to have that yeah i would some some paintings that I would consider significant pieces of mine, which I'm going to have to do restoration work on at some point. And, you know, some of them are 20 odd years old. And I don't know. I mean, I don't think that should be old enough for them to require restoration. No. Yeah. No, I thought oil was supposed to last like hundreds of years. When it's done right. 
And I bombed numerous paintings at the very end when I'm varnishing them and then just totally messed up oh. and had to remove the varnish and ended up removing the top layers of the painting oh, that God. I had to go back in and redo. I know nothing of painting. It's brutal. Varnish. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, having, yeah, having to re resurface a painting is is painful, and and you know, I mean, you try to take advantage of it and say, okay, as long as I'm having to go over the whole thing, what can I improve? And sure, uh, but it still hurts. Hmm. That's the most nerve wracking part of a painting is at the end when I varnish. I'm like, all right, <laughs> for the best. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't even varnished a painting yet that I've done. I've yeah. been too scared to. Yeah, I don't know, know if I'm I, gonna ruin it. Or... I had a painting that I bought off this artist, and it was quite a bit of money. And it, he had finished it, you know, recently. So he was like, "It hasn't been varnished. You know how to varnish paintings?" I said, "Oh yeah, yeah, I can varnish it." Oh god! And I, that that happened to it. Oh, I was, I was, I was and. I was like, well, I've got, I've got to remove the varnish. And it was the first time I had ever removed varnish from a painting. Oh. So I, you know, I talked to people, I read the articles and I was like, all right, just take your time. You can do this. And as I was doing it, it was doing, it was coming off fine. But then after a while, I started noticing pigment on my oh. rag as I was, you know, removing the varnish. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't sleep that night. I had oh. to biggest knot in my oh. stomach I felt like throwing up oh and the next God. day the next day I called him up and was like you're gonna kill me but you guess what happened and I explained the whole situation to him and he kind of laughed and he said that he had completely ruined two paintings himself that year by varnishing them and, and screwing it up and then trying to remove it and making matters worse one painting he said that he grabbed the wrong thing and he didn't grab his varnish he grabbed his goo gone and put goo gone all over the thing <laughs> oh, and completely oh, destroyed it God. completely but he oh was so just crazy. dissolved it oh man yeah oh, but he was so yeah. gracious he said send the painting back and i don't he, he said it's gonna be at least six months before i can get to it but i will go back in and fix it and he wow. did awesome mm -hmm. so okay um, but still, ouch, 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 oh, ouch. Yeah. God. And it was it was a painting that he had won an award for, too. Oh, and I oh, felt like this. So oh. <laughs> well, that means he loved it enough to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, I've definitely had that happen to me with, with uh, extremely detailed parts of, of paintings, you know, and... Uh, that stinking feeling. After he sent it back, I never varnished it. It's still on the wall and you can see places that have like matte areas and places that are super shiny. And I'm like, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> well, you know, I hate to sound this way, but you do have the option of, you know, of course, give it that year, but then just hit it very lightly with a spray varnish. And yeah. uh, you, you can normalize the finish. Retouch varnish too, I've noticed, um, is pretty user friendly. Yeah, it's real easy and it doesn't seem to, uh, it, it's, it's thinner and, and I think you can work it quicker and easier on the surface and it's less likely to sort of reconstitute and, and wake up the paint. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they say to wait up to a year. Uh, before varnishing and that's sometimes just not realistic yeah I, I i wait like a month and then i'll varnish because but i paint super thin so yeah i also think if you're using uh an alkyd that uh you're, you're good you're you're not gonna have any problem uh liquid is an example uh and sean barber he uses the the gambling uh alkyd which mm -hmm. is called galkid He's the one who told me to use that liquid. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm using now. So Jeff, go, Jeff uses it. Liquid is also something you can find almost anywhere, like any like rural hobby store. They've got it, you know, Walmart, wherever. So 
it's kind of nice to have some things that that you don't have to well you know we don't have proper art supply stores around here we live in the sticks you can send away though through the internet yeah right? yeah you just don't always remember to and it's like oh shoot i need such and such now yeah <laughs> we just got a hobby lobby here where we're at i love hobby lobby Love you it. know, we had we had a really cool independent store that was like a Hobby Lobby, but it was locally owned and had a little toy store attached and that sort of thing. But it just it couldn't survive COVID. Uh, yep. bummer. The stuff is going to that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I'm curious to see which of our favorite restaurants are still around. But, you know, I mean, we haven't actually had a carry-out meal since this whole thing started. You haven't? Partly. So just, you're just, we have not. Just well, that's good. We make all our own meals, yeah. We've and, done, you know, we grow some of the stuff ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a hard thing to keep up, but we're we're sort of food hobbyists in some sense, and you know we do a lot of uh, foraging, uh, and uh, this year was a killer mushroom year, and and we were able to, you know, I mean this is one way to keep the nine year old interested in in stuff, you know, it's like yeah. she knows if she harvested something, it's more interesting. She's definitely going to eat it you know yeah yeah or some kids are like no just give me chicken nuggets that's all i want you know so we've been real lucky that way but it's because she's involved yeah but y'all you have an amazing place i've seen some of your pictures of progress of what you're doing out there a while back you batted a bunch of stuff and you have ponds and stuff like that yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's really we've cool. dug in pretty deep here, the hyperspace compound. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, awesome. I would think it would be, I would think it would be a great place to grow up. Oh, I'm I'm me and my wife are trying to do something similar, but it's a bit of a process. We have a, my wife has a property out of town, a nice little bit of property, but. My shop has been in town and we've been trying to focus on that. So we haven't really spent the time we want to out there, but we definitely have a lot of ideas like what you have done with your stuff. Well, it's tough though, you know, like I, I'm able to get people to travel out here, you know, uh, but we're super inconvenient, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's uh, something yeah, you have to that. really go out of your way to get to. And, and uh, <clears throat> so, well, just maybe opening someday. a shop out and in nowhere yeah i would definitely be out yeah. there one day to get a tattoo from you i would love to just i have no retirement plans just fyi i don't know that any of us do <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know how easy that'll be to do as a tattoo artist yeah, yeah. plus i just don't have a desire to yeah. I definitely hope to be able to slow down when I get older, you know, uh, like Horiyoshi, who does like a 90 minute day. I'm thinking like a three hour day would be killer. You know, if I had, you know, three or four of those a week. Um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, <laughs> you just normally sell a day when you do your your appointments or. Five. Well, it's it's based on an hourly rate, but typically people are coming for a six hour day because they're getting large work, multi session work, and uh, six is about what I can do. You know, at that point, I I start to, you know, I think I've I've found the right ergonomic situation because everything wears out at once. You know, my hands yeah. don't go first, or my back doesn't go first. Everything kind of goes at once, at about yeah. six hours. That's why I tell a lot of my customers that, you know, five to six hours is probably about a max for most anybody, even artists. You need a little bit of a break to, you know, get your mind back on whatever you're working on. And just there's a physical fatigue to it, you know. Uh, yeah. I mean, when I when I was younger, I did I did longer sessions. 
and I've done, I've done my share of 12 hour sessions and I've had them done on me. And you get into the zone and your clients doing well. And you know, you don't necessarily want to break your pace. Yeah. Dude. I mean, I, I would say that I consider myself a light-handed tattoo artist. I don't know if that makes any sense or. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Okay, so I think that I I hit people exactly as hard as I need to. It's hard to imagine, you know, wanting to hit them harder than necessary, and it's hard to imagine being able to do what I need to do, hitting many softer. Mm -hmm. Right, and that that's kind of where I'm at. I I feel like personally, I feel like I'm not doing it very easy or light handed, but they most of my clients would say I am that more light handed than other people they've been tattooed by, but. I'm not trying to put it to somebody's bone either. And that I think some tattoo artists think that that's the way to do it. Well, you know, you want to put it in there, but putting it in there can sometimes just mean taking your time and mm -hmm. making sure that you've saturated enough uh, yeah. rather than pounding harder. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. one of the nice things about, you know, modern equipment. And of course, with coil machines, when, when they were running right, this would be true about them too. But you can get them tuned to a place where there's not really any extra power beyond what's necessary to get the needles into the skin. So you're, right. the skin is not absorbing this additional shock of this, you know, pounding right. needle. It's just, you know, the, the needle gets in and uh, does the job and gets back out again. Right. Yeah, that's kind of what... what I use smaller needles. That has a lot to do with what Jeff talks about. <laughs> Promotes a faster heal time. It's not so traumatizing to the skin. Smaller needles, you mean like bug pin kind of needles? Yeah, and like like number eight or number yeah. ten. Not, not like a standard twelve and long taper. I try to use long tapers. But I've I've been tattooing for about. 15 years now but i don't even think i'm i still feel like i have a lot to learn i think anybody should still feel like i have a lot to learn but i also didn't really get a very good apprenticeship or anything like that yeah and i had to figure well, it out i'll own. tell you what it's it's easy enough to become proficient in tattooing but you definitely don't stop learning at any point and and i don't know if, judy if you found this to be true but i'm at a point now where i feel like i know the least i've ever known uh, because maybe it's because there's so many people around who are so damn good. Right. But right. Uh, maybe, and maybe because I just question myself more and I ask myself, do I really know what I'm doing here? Do I really have a good method for this particular thing I'm, I'm uh, trying to do right now. And uh, sometimes I feel like I'm just winging it. Right. You're an ex-teacher. You're a master. <laughs> Just deal with it. Teenagers <laughs> that are teenagers are always thinking that they know everything. And then as they get older, then they realize, oh, Craig, I, or, you know, hopefully they realize they didn't know anything at all. And uh, so maybe it's just that right. way art as well. It's like we yeah. just build an awareness. So then all of a sudden you're aware of all these other things that you can continue learning. Or you just get yeah. to, you get to know so much about art that, you can see exactly how how broad the whole thing is and and kind mm -hmm. of get a grasp of the vast things that you don't know yes okay. yeah yep. that's true <laughs> very i come across new tattoo artists that don't want to accept some criticism or anything like that to i don't know that happens to you much by because you're mostly I have people like I have a shop that I get walk-ins and a lot of people come in and talk to me but I don't ever want to people are trying to get help and you want to give them some tips but then they get mad at you or yeah. don't want to talk to you. you're like my wife will tell me that I probably broke somebody's heart and I, so I don't mean it in any any bad way or anything like that. I think everybody's 
still learn. I'm still learning. So. But yeah. Well, you know, when, when someone asks for a critique, hopefully they'll be open to hearing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think if you're asking but for some a job, people just want. Right. Be right. So that, that's that's what often happens, right? Yeah. You get the, the, the portfolio is put in front of. You. Yeah, you have to try to politely explain why they might need to spend a little more time trying to work on some of their art or something like that. Then you tend to hurt people's feelings. Yeah, you don't learn as much from being told what you're doing right so much as you learn from realizing what you're doing wrong. Oh, both. Right. You want you need to hear both. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to hear yeah. both. Yeah, well, I always try to. I, yeah, I always try to explain what that they're doing something. Anybody's doing something good because artists, I don't know, subjective. I guess. So, somebody else might not like your work as much as some other people might like it but i'm more on a tangent now (laughs) i'll take a break for a few latkes are done and they're hot and they smell delicious oh wow you've really (laughs) gotten a lot done on that cruising around uh-huh. in the background i've got so many layers to add to it though <laughs> yeah no, I, I i could see you could you could put another 20 hours into this oh, easily. Yeah. just uh-huh. doing a little bit here and there <clears throat> oh oh there's so back to what, 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 that one. oh yeah nice looks great nice. all you guys looks really good oh, yeah. awesome so does yours judy yeah, totally. Yeah, you're oh. just awesome. Very yeah, awesome. guy, that was something that you, uh, I think you were out of the room for. Um, Melissa's partner has a tattoo by Judy, and he got to come and show it to her and oh. talk about the experience. It was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. He didn't tell the truth about how I heard him. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 I remembered him, too. Um, oh, that's awesome. Nice fellow. I remember yeah. everybody, you know, I mean, if, if someone really? shows me their tattoo, you know, even if it was from 30 years ago, uh, you know, by and large, I can remember, you know, the day that they came in and everything. <laughs> well, yeah, once you see you're it. better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because I haven't done a billion little tattoos. I mean, I, I did yeah, a one. bunch in the beginning. Uh and, you know, th- those little ones from the very beginning, I think when, when I see pictures of them, because sometimes like one of them will walk into a shop that somebody I know owns and they'll be like, oh, dude, let me send a guy a picture of that. And I'll see it and be like, oh, yeah, right, <laughs> right, that guy, you know, no, but, yeah. uh, but, you know, pretty quickly within my first couple of years, I was doing repeat people you know all the time i had i had regulars and they were getting the bigger work and and so of course i remember them right because yeah. you got all these all these times in the chair when you spend a lot of hours on somebody i think my hardest part is seeing people i did small tattoos on like names and little ones like oh, it looks like a tattoo over done but it also looks like a tattoo a <laughs> hundred with the other artists in the area would, could have done also. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I don't like to admit it. <laughs> I don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you didn't get that from me. <laughs> I, I don't do the faces. Yeah, I'm very happy that I've switched to oil here. That's because I wanted to do that. I, I have a harder time working loose with acrylic just mm-hmm. in terms of having brush work that I like. I feel like I have to scumble it down because it just doesn't doesn't have a, a nice character to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you like that word? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a good one. Scumble it. Scumble it. Yeah, now, now back in the day, 
we would have bookshelves full of art books by people <clears throat> and you reference books and things like that. Well, yeah, of course, I still have it. Uh, I don't buy as many art books now because I'm just looking at art all the time on my phone, which I know is not the same. But okay. there were a few art books which I found to be highly influential to me. And uh, one illustrator, and I know we were talking about this uh, last time uh, Leo was on here and, and we were doing the landscape, but that, that would be Michael Whelan. Um, yeah, I was very, very yeah. influenced by him. Uh, and Judy, I was wondering uh, if we could hear some of your favorites. Favorite what? Some of your favorite uh, art books that uh, you've collected through the years. Oh, um, I really love James Coleman. He does, uh, he used to work for Disney and he just does beautiful things with light and landscapes that I love. And uh, I, I, I used to go to this bookstore, which now there isn't anymore, but I used to go to this bookstore and get um the award books for the year for fantasy. For uh, fantasy oh, meetings. Spectrum? Yeah. Yeah, I those got, are I, amazing. Oh, they're so good. I, I try to get movies. into it every year, and every year I don't, but I'm still <laughs> trying. <laughs> it's, it's right up your alley, what I tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, fantasy, you got great, that down. Great and that is all. That's crazy that you have tried and haven't gotten in. What are they freaking looking for? Michael Whalen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his stuff is so um, graphic, but at the same time, you know, it's it's got enough realism in it. But he would do things with light and shadow that just made it a lot stronger. And I found that to be a very tattooable stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, definitely stole a few of his lighting tricks. I love those My pieces sister. he did for the uh, Sepultura album covers. Uh, you familiar? Seen I'm pretty I sure, I must have seen them, you know? Familiar, yeah. I just can't picture him off the top of my head. I also like the old ones like Maxfield Parish and oh, oh yeah. I never get tired of Norman Rockwell stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those two in particular, um, their ability to portray people, um, you know, you look up close and it's not not ridiculously over detailed or over rendered, but they just nail them. You know, the light and the shadow and, and uh uh, the expressions. Yeah, I went and saw um, Norman Rockwell's uh, when it came to, to our town and uh, it was absolutely amazing. Like if he didn't like a piece, like he's painting it and he didn't like one of the faces in the dinner scene or whatever, he'd take an exacto and cut that sucker out <laughs> and put another face in it. I swear. Oh. It was amazing. Interesting. And he Why? uses, and when he uses the people, like in the famous painting, you know, the one that he did of the tattoo guy. Yeah. Yeah. You can look at that, and it it looks like the guy, although he's kind of caricatured, you know. Right. Right. He he uh, expanded the lower lip to make him look a little yeah. dumber, and yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah he's, so he's great. Yeah, and Sorry. Parish, you know, uh, one thing that I think is awesome about Maxfield Parish is. Uh, he, uh, he built elaborate models, um, which yeah, he used yeah. as references for his paintings. So of the rock uh, cliff faces and things like that, and mm -hmm. of sometimes little houses and, and things like that, uh, little mill mm -hmm. houses. Uh, he built those things, you know, uh, in, in his workshop and, and made them very, yeah. you know, he filled the whole garage. And so I've made models that filled the whole garage. <laughs> so I totally respect that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I watched a few of those models were pretty awesome. The organic ones you did uh -huh. and then you light Very them and awesome. everything yeah. yeah yeah light them and in some cases uh 
get out the the fog machine and you, you, the whole the whole shebang. You did yeah, that Paris, with Carson, didn't? Yeah, yeah. Carson went pretty crazy with his. Yeah, I love that. So cool. I I have I've wanted to do one like that, but I've never actually made myself do it. Yeah, it's a it's a, a chunk of work figuring out clay. But you know, the other the thing about clay is if you're building something that you often draw, um, you'll find that you'll just get new insights about how to draw it as a result yeah. of building. As you're twisting and moving the clay in your hands, uh, these familiar shapes, you're seeing them from unfamiliar angles. Yeah, they, so the, you did one with jo, or with uh, Carson, right? The, uh, a big one that y'all did a back piece to or something, right? Oh, uh, let's see. What uh, was that hand? Carson and I, um, I made a model for a rib panel that I never got to finish on him. Um, I think the back piece that you're thinking of is uh, I made with the, this guy, Casey Ball. He's been involved in some of our paint groups here. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we built the whole torso. I just remember that the whole sculpture and then I seen the tattoo is just really awesome that it was created all the way through that, you know, it, you did the whole thing prior, you made it prior to tattooing it and made it flow really awesome. It's, it's a really, really cool concept. I also had your book on uh, reinventing the tattoo. Oh, right on. Yep. And then you're like the flow. And that's one thing that I've tried to really incorporate in everything that I do is flow. Just try to make sure it fits on the body. It doesn't look like it wasn't supposed to be there because I've seen a lot of really awesome tattoos that just don't look like they're supposed to be where they're at because they just don't fit right or kind of like right. It's a it's a shame when a when a good tattoo falls short on the uh, the way that it sits on the body, like uh, facing backwards or <laughs> right yeah, or even it's, backwards. You know what I see a lot is just things that should be larger. You mm -hmm. know. Uh, oh, yeah. that would be twice as awesome if they were only 10% bigger but yeah, yeah. you know uh, I'm guessing some of it is the client the client yeah. just you know preferring something as a particular size or just saying well this is my budget right. but uh, sometimes as artists we have to I don't say fight that but we have to, to work <laughs> with that to you know guide our, right. our clients towards towards getting pieces that are you know you might even have to say listen uh it's only going to take an extra couple hours and i'll even you know throw in an hour free uh right. but it'll be worth it trust me you know and right you know do that once or twice with somebody and uh you know while well, you might set a dangerous precedent but uh you know the way i look at it is um, when somebody's in my chair long enough, they'll get a free hour here and there, you know, uh, I'm charging them for yeah. six hours. That's, that's my day. But if we, we're at a point where we've done our six hours and they're sitting well and I'm sitting well and, and, uh, I'm enjoying it, you know, I don't want to have to stop. Uh, they might end up getting a free hour out of me. So yeah. it's, it's not like a big sacrifice. It's not like I'm shortchanging myself at that point. I'm an artist making my art, you know? Right. not wanting to stop yeah i definitely well, always do that as well if it's something that's gonna look way better and i'm enjoying myself then i i do that with a lot of my clients as well yeah they I was, end up I liking it that. later <laughs> yeah it's yeah i've done that also i do that a lot just to i also explain to them like you know it, it would be best if you did it in this size it would be a much better concept and in I know it seems like it's a little bit more, but we can break it up into a couple of different sessions. So you don't have to necessarily get it all at once. It won't feel so um, weighing on your budget. You know, another thing that I try to point out, and, and of course I usually don't have to sell people on this stuff, <laughs> you know, uh, Yeah. but uh, you kind of point out, you know, if we only make it this size, you're going to have this like weird little area of skin around it. 
yeah. that you're not yeah. going to have room to put something else there, you know, but you're going to end up having to put filler and, you know, but if you just make this shape big and they're like, well, I'm not necessarily like meaning to sleeve out my whole arm. You sometimes That's have to just funny. level with people. Yeah. You have to level with people and say, listen, let's just be <laughs> realistic. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're clearly, you know, like in your 18th tattoo here, you're clearly becoming a serious collector. You have to start yeah. thinking like one. And yeah. people, they, they like to hear that. Like, oh, I'm a serious collector. Fucking yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, But you have to start yeah. thinking like one, which means you need some plans. You need to actually be thinking ahead. And uh, well, you don't want to, you know, do something now that's going to limit you from doing something way more epic later on. Yeah, yeah I'll say that to, to, to people also, mostly younger like 18 year olds or young kids are trying to get a tattoo and I was explaining like do you consider getting are you thinking about getting a full sleeve or is this something you want to move further on and they're like yeah and well they explain to me you know it might be best to lay it out so you can end up with a full sleeve that fits well and looks like it's supposed to be there and you don't have a bunch of random little pieces all over the place you can have one nice flowing piece Oh, nothing looks Young. better than a fully unified sleeve, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had this you can do that in session. One, I had this one client, uh, well, she didn't end up becoming a client, but she came in and she was, she had this very thin line thing on her ribs and it was, you know, six inches tall, but it was just a single line of this uh, uh, butterfly or something. And, and she said, you know, I show people my tattoo and they just say, oh, that's nice. And I really want them to say, wow. And I said, okay, well, let's do some uh, marker design and see what we can get from that and see how you feel about it. And I did this big marker design and, and filled it out and told her about the colors. And she just looked in the mirror and she goes, wow. And then she says, but I don't know if I'm ready for, for this size. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> I, I, I didn't say it to her, but I was just like, maybe you're not ready for somebody saying, wow, at your tattoo then. <laughs> <laughs> Bluntly, okay. you know. Yeah, and I have not seen her yet again, but maybe someday. Yeah, I mean, it's it's important to be sensitive to the fact that that people are are a little hesitant or whatever, but you just have to be straight up with the ones that are starting to fill up with small stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know they're going to regret the small stuff later they're not going to regret getting tattooed because they <laughs> clearly love tattoos but yeah. they're going to regret getting those tattoos because they're yeah. going to want a nice sleeve yeah yeah well here uh, this small town i opened the first tattoo shop ever in this area here so a lot of people haven't seen good tattoos and i like to ex just explain to them that you can you can do a bunch of t tattoos as long as you make them addable or end them in a way that they can easily be tied into so they can look like they're all you have one full sleeve because i don't do a lot of huge i do a lot of bigger decent size pieces but nothing on a major major scale i guess but the ones that i do do i just <laughs> start out with something that I can easily add to or make it look like it flows into the next piece I can go under it or over it and add layers and I just tell people I you know who is really go ahead yeah you know Michelle my wife she uh she got very good at that like you know she had these young women coming to her for work and they liked the big unified like symmetrical sleeves that she did but they would just want a shoulder cap and she'd be like well let's do a pair of shoulder caps Mm -hmm. and they'd feel ready for that but you know then she'd leave it open at the bottom and in the course of their correspondence she might throw them a rough sketch of how it could expand if they wanted to go farther down and next thing you know 10 years later it's taken them 10 years right but they're down to the wrist and, they and they've done like it in maybe four stages but you know it's been planned out in such a way because you know she knew all along that she was guiding them in that direction yeah that's what That's I a great to way to do it is the showing them a little rough sketch of it. Then they're oh oh that could be my arm oh yeah yeah 
or make or or just be the only want to do that. Right. Yes. Yes. When people see that you're excited about something, mm -hmm. uh, that often will will be the thing that that convinces them. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh wow! If you're if you're that into it, let's do it. Yeah. All right. Totally. And give them ideas. Give people ideas. That's one thing that I try to tell my newer artists: is just make them feel like you want to do their tattoo and give them ideas. You'll definitely do something. Most people don't know what they want when they come in. You got to help them come up with an idea or concepts. Yeah. Well, Maybe. often people will have ideas, and they might not necessarily be fully viable. But mm -hmm. you know, I try really hard yeah. to look for something in there that is gonna that we can bring into the tattoo and, and actually make it different. They can feel like they, you know, had some kind of uh, important uh, influence on the outcome of it then. But yeah. uh, it's not, that's not my only reason. I really want to Should be throwing a curveball. I like the curveballs. Uh, uh, yeah. I need them, you know, because without mm -hmm. them, I will just keep doing the same things. And yeah. uh, when you are an artist that specializes as I do, um it's a dangerous place because you could very easily get super comfortable <laughs> and turn out a lot of very similar work and it would all look yeah. good and people would be perfectly happy to pay for it you, they would get exactly what they expected from you and you would eventually grow nervous about doing anything more adventuresome yeah. than that and mm -hmm. simply would stop mm -hmm. yeah I'd, i tend to work better off of ideas People are like, well, just do whatever you want. So I have a few clients who are like, I'm like, I, I, I appreciate that you're willing to let me just do whatever, but I, I really feel like I can do better if you give me a concept to run with and a few ideas that you like, and then I can feel like I'm doing something more for you and not just what I want to do. Yeah, at the very least, get a sense of their tastes because, you know. Yeah. I'm going to do know, whatever I want either way, not necessarily whatever I want, but I'm going to do – a avert my own version of what they want i just need to have something to go with i guess sometimes if people are really at a loss for words i'll ask them to show me their favorite pieces from me recently <clears throat> and so that will often give me a pretty good insight uh yeah and they don't have to be from me either just just some of their favorite tattoos uh and I'm not going to look at those while I'm drawing. In fact, uh, I'm no. firmly against that. I think it's important to, if, if someone shows you a tattoo as, as a reference, as an idea, to really look at it to, to get a good sense of, of what's cool about it. Uh, get your own impression of it and then put it away so that yeah, when I you did. start drawing, it's, it's just going to be you. Yeah. I, I tell people to give me, show me pictures of tattoos they like so I can, get an idea for the style that they're trying to go for. For me, I tend to do a lot of everything because I don't really have a lot of people coming to me for a specific thing. I do a lot of skulls and stuff like that. But whenever somebody comes to me for a skull, they kind of just tell me to do whatever. But in that case, I already know what they want. But it's really cool to have something to go off of so you can feel like you're drawing for them and not just yeah. for yourself. Yeah, in fact, I really, what I'm aiming for when I'm talking with my clients is I want to reach a point where I get a kind of a flash, you know, in my head of, I see it, you know, I can see the tattoo. Uh, we've talked about it enough that that happens, that little magical alchemy comes together and I get that flash and then I want to do the piece yeah right that's a I deal with around here I deal with a lot of people that come to me from other tattoo artists they're like well they didn't make me feel comfortable they made me feel like they weren't um, interested in doing a tattoo or anything like that and, I always want to try to find a way to uh, make people feel comfortable also do what they want. And some tattoo artists now still tell around here, I'm not when I was in Austin in central Texas, I never really seen that a lot because there's a lot of good tattoo artists over there, but here there's not a lot of selection, I guess. 
I mean, people tend to make people feel like their ideas are dumb. I don't think anybody's idea is dumb or anything. I think there's just a way to make it more tattooable versus what they see. <laughs> well, I think in many cases, it's because these artists have limitations. And rather than saying, I'm too limited to think of some good way of making that work. I'm, I'm only doing it in the corners today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed at how much Judy has gotten done. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I know the mermaids. Yeah, the you tail is great. You guys stuff, so there. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh. But I, I really like the iridescence of the tail, the, the shine yeah. on it. Beautiful. Judy, do you usually, are like the ones that you do usually that large? Are you talking to me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> wow, okay, yeah. I had imagined that they were like smaller, just I don't know why, but it's so cool to see them all in real life. It's beautiful and big and oh, I'm gonna thanks. look at the other ones now and and imagine I do small ones large. too. I like those little wood pieces, you know. Yeah. Like here's a little can you see that? Wait a minute. A hey, it's a skull. Oh that's oh, yeah, cool. nice. Well, wow. see, I'm, awesome. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a oh, awesome. something else in there, but it's awesome. funny. <laughs> but that's only that's five, really... uh, seven inches. Yeah, well, I love cool. circles. That's... I love circles. They're they're a lot of fun to paint. That's super. Cool. I like ovals. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I, I've I've got your oval, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I told you that, that that thing turned out to be the wrong shape of oval. But we do have a Hobby Lobby. I just haven't been there. I'll get there. Okay. We'll, we'll make it happen. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I got to have Guy H's in one in there. <laughs> but I trade with anybody who's a tattoo artist. Okay. Hint, hint. Cool. For yeah, the, cool. the, the Hobby Lobby. Pretty, pretty good selection. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, this This is a Hobby yeah, Lobby. Yeah, Hobby Lobby 5 by 7 It's very important that it's that way. It's got to be vertical because that's how the rest of my collection is. Oh. I'll trade you whatever you tell me to put on there. I'll put something on there for you. Oh, that's sweet. It's a fun I'll thing. I've got, like, find one of those I've got like we don't have 60 a hobby of them. Here, but I'm sure could find you can send like for it. Somewhere. No, you can't have something like it. It has to be exactly that. Aha. Uh -huh. Honestly, it has to be on the interwebs. Yeah, I, I know this already yeah. because I got some that were almost exactly like that and I couldn't use them. <laughs> because uh, Judy has this big collection <laughs> and do. she wants them to all have the equal presentation. I, yeah, that's, it's that's weird. It's OCD-ish. Well, but I have that. I mean, it no, it makes sense. Really cool. It totally makes sense. Yeah. I've sure got some beauties. I'll post them. Awesome. All right. Hobby Lobby. Judy, maybe they're you only can like, send me the only like three first. bucks. Oh, nice. What? Maybe you can, if you are able to send <laughs> me the link to that, whatever the shape is that you that You, you have met me, huh? I don't <laughs> know. These things. <laughs> she looks like an it? elegant mermaid. Yeah. She's going to the opera. Yes. <laughs> that sounds like it'd be cool, the mermaid opera. Sure. Yeah, the Sydney Opera House is right there on the water. They could actually have a row of seats there in the water. Yes, I like that idea. <clears throat> okay. Is your daughter doing a? Homeschooling? 
Yeah, and she was before this whole thing came down. She's not a good fit for public schools. And uh, uh -huh. which is fine, you know what I mean? We ha we we're do. only having the one kid and uh, it's given us the, the chance to really be involved. And um, Michelle is an incredible teacher. I mean, I, I teach also, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm full time and it with work a lot. So, uh, and, and we're just trying to keep her up to date with where the kids her age are supposed to be. But then we Did also you read have her a, a story. <laughs> Sorry. What's that? Did you read her a story? Oh yeah, yeah. We we do that every night. Um, That's what I. That's a good thing. She reads on her own right now. She's reading Harry Potter, so she's a fairly advanced reader. But yeah, uh, that's a tough one. McGonagall was hard for me. But uh, yeah, as long as she still wants me to read to her, I'm going to keep doing it. Excellent. We also have a book project that we're doing together that we wrote together. We've been working on it for you know, since she was five. And when we're done, we're gonna Kickstarter it and actually try to put it out there. Right on. Cool. Brad. Lizard life. Join <laughs> Tiny and Spiny, the Eastern fence lizards in their adventures as they try to rescue the small creatures of the garden from uh, Orcus, the giant rat snake. Whoa. Nice. Oh, cool. rats <laughs> That's neat. Best of luck. And that's we been do. fun. We do homeschool for our kids also. Oh, I do you? Was that yeah. something from before COVID? Yes. Yeah, it's been the same. Similar. I have three kids, but okay. one is just a baby. I have my son and my daughter. They do homeschool. There's a lot to do with just not fit for the school and also just people in general. Yeah. Yeah, the local Too school here, you know, the and stuff like that. The faculty at the local school we really liked, and they meant well, and they really tried for for Kaya, but they they just couldn't do it. And meanwhile, the other kids, you know, I mean, even even at first grade, there was a lot of you know some nastiness, real nastiness, bullying, and, and oh yeah, that's you know, true, and racism I, I, and stuff I'm like so that. Jealous. At that age. I'm jealous of the kids getting to go do homeschool because man, I would have. I would have been an A student if I got to homeschool. Yep. Uh, Kids drove me nuts going to school. They were mean. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. the same was, for me in school. I was an awkward kid. And uh, yeah, it did not go well most of the time. Oh. I just knew what it was like for me in school. And I'd feel like my daughter's a lot like me. And it would be even worse nowadays, I think than it was when I was in school. So it's kind of been, that's probably been part, a big part of why. And then a lot of, unfortunately, some parents just don't see the same values and they don't raise their kids the same way. And well, you know, a lot of the time, kids. both parents work and it's just not really even possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, we yeah. have to take <laughs> and they're single parents and stuff like that, that. I know that has a lot to do with it also. I mean, we took a significant drop in income to do that. You know, Michelle and I used to book our appointments on the same days because it was fun, right? You know, a husband and wife tattoo team. And, you know, a lot of our clients knew each other and, you know, it was fun. And, uh, you know, we had a, a two income household. So it was a pretty major decision to, to do it. You know what I mean? It wasn't something we could just do casually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's definitely hard. So it's also hard to keep them because you're the parents, so they also keep them motivated and interested in their schoolwork. It's really hard to. Yep. Yep. Uh, and uh, <coughs> there's a bit of kicking and screaming sometimes, and and uh, yeah. you have to not get fatigued by that, and have to keep you cool. Uh, yeah. Because it's the only thing that works. 
and you also lose your like moral high ground the minute you lose your goal <laughs> you're just as, yeah. as bad as them you know and uh so it's been a good education on that level i also teach some of her uh, writing classes uh and um you know class is always in session <laughs> yeah well you can learn all the time she has an ipad pro which she's not allowed to use for games or movies or talking to her friends now she has a regular ipad that she can do that stuff with but the pro um she's very serious when she uses it she makes a lot of good art on it and uh she does animations and she treats it with seriousness and and i think that um treating her with with the respect to say yeah we know that you have a serious artist in you and, and we want you to to you know empower that yeah it's a good thing to do to your kid it's really awesome. good i on the other hand do not have an ipad pro and i have to borrow <laughs> her <laughs> do you do any of your renderings through procreate uh, I do, yes, stuff. yes. I, I'm, mean, you know, I still do more of it on Photoshop, and you know, I, I love my big Cintiq setup and everything. But uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes Procreate is just the better tool for the job, and uh, sometimes I just feel like sitting and doing it in my lap while watching a movie instead of sitting up in the office. Yeah, I do. I do a lot of. Uh, well, I do almost all my concepts on Procreate. I like how you can take a picture of somebody's tattoo and work on it directly mm -hmm. over it. Yeah. Yeah. I never get tattoos. Rendering. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I started tattoo. Go ahead. I didn't uh, really yeah, I, I like that for uh, um, cover ups, especially, where I'll, yeah. uh, I'll drop the, the before mm -hmm. photo on there and I'll just do layer <laughs> after layer after layer. And, yeah. uh, I'll usually try to do a minimum of five or six different drawings uh, before I say, okay, one, one of these is going to be the best one. Yeah, it definitely helps with cover-ups. I usually don't do that many drawings if it's analog. I'll, I'll, I don't know. I, I take that back because my sketchbook, even if I'm drawing sleeves, it's, it's a like a four by five inch sketchbook. It's a teeny tiny thing. Um, which keeps me from getting too bogged down in detail. And, and, you know, when I'm designing tattoos, that first pass of the design, I don't even want the ability to get detailed. Right. So keep it small. <laughs> then if I want to get detailed, I'll, I'll photograph it and bring it in the procreate or Photoshop. Yeah. Mess around and play around with it. I love doing cover ups. I, I think I have more fun with cover ups than I do with just, doing a tattoo straight like well on fresh skin there's something liberating about cover-ups i feel like like i don't know i mean of course you can make it worse right but uh <laughs> yeah but you know you they're gonna be happy with with something that might not look like your very best work but is successful at covering it you know what i mean and and uh but what ends up happening for me is i find that um i have to reach into into new spaces and and i'll end up with some new shapes because i'm i'm working with what's there i don't just try to try to like blast over i'm definitely not a blast over guy i like no, to I uh, respect what's there and and try to you know, say, okay, well, there's a really dark edge here. So I'm going to incorporate a dark edge into the, the new design rather than just trying to pretend it's not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I like to use every amount of open space as I can mm -hmm. and use as much of the line work in the other tattoo as a part of the new one to, to make sure that it, it adds a texture to it that, and then it, you, you kind of, like you said, work outside of your body. Like you can change it and it adds stuff to it that you wouldn't get if that wasn't there. I think that's what I like about it. It has a look to it that you wouldn't have if you didn't 
start with something already there. And it's yeah, really you know, uh, One of my favorite artists is Max Ernst. Uh, he was a, you know, a surrealist around the time of Dali. And a lot of the stuff that he did, he would start with either he would like lay a canvas or piece of paper down on, let's say a piece of stone or concrete or tree bark. And he'd do a rubbing onto it to get a texture. Um, and then paint into that. Or in some cases he would uh, do this decalcomania thing where uh, you uh, cover your canvas with uh, very diluted paint and then press a piece of plastic wrap down onto it and peel it off. Mm. And then you get these really crazy, like fractal kind of rivery kind of, things and then you paint into that you know so it's not cover up but it's you know taking an existing pattern and elaborating it and running with it yeah peter grick i don't know if uh, anyone here knows who peter grick is he's one of the people that was in the encyclopedia but he uh he does a lot of decalcomania really amazing stuff i love that sort of stuff i remember uh when i was there for uh, at your place for the last uh, session guy that uh, your floorboards started looking like they had little ducks all over them at one yeah. point i was like oh i just love finding stuff like that in, in like around you and some the floorboards specifically like uh, have a lot of little patterns that can jump out at you We've got a crazy paint job in our bathroom that you can find a new face in it every time. I mean, I, yeah. I pretty much play that game with it when I sit down in there. It's like, okay, let me find a new face. Yes. Bathroom We've had this paint for- job for, yeah, <laughs> Michelle did the paint job and it's very textured and oh, maybe we've had it for 15 years and I still find new stuff in it. Awesome. So yeah, Jesse Smith, uh, I think I'd love to have him lead a Monday night thing sometime where oh, yeah. what, what we'll do is have some blobs. And these Jesse blobs Smith's can be, yeah, Jesse Smith. He's a new school guy from uh, Richmond. Yeah. And uh, yeah, his, stuff, really cool. his stuff is hugely expressive. Uh, yeah. And he often will do this, like, you know, find a stain on the concrete floor and, and he'll stare at it and find <clears throat> not one face, but two or three. And uh, photograph it and draw all, all of the faces that he sees in it. I think that would be a fun exercise. Oh, yeah. I have a great pillow in my living room for that that I've been thinking about taking a photo of so I, sh- I should take a photo of it and see if it could be one of the things that we could use it's got like a million faces in it nice Jeff Jeff Cooper has been doing that with some of his food every once in a while he'll post a picture his food, his food. <laughs> yeah you will awesome. see an image in his food and some other things <laughs> That's the thing that Michael Whalen's doing a lot lately, Guy, is uh, um, he calls them pellet gremlins. Have you seen those? <laughs> I have not, no. And it's just like uh, little scribbles when he's painting and he has a little pellet on the side that he wipes his brush off of or off on here and there. And then he'll later go into those and create images out of them. And they're mind-blowing <laughs> the oh, stuff man. that he gets out of them. Wow. Interesting. His name? Michael Whalen. Michael Whalen. Uh, okay. I, I think on Instagram it's just Michael Whalen. W H E L A N. Yeah. Yeah, Judy, you'll probably recognize his work. He's he's one of the one of the big names like Boris Vallejo, who's been around for a lot of like Stephen King book covers and oh, a lot gosh. of bands. He's he's done album covers and and just a lot of stuff, advertising, you name it. Yeah, I looked him up uh, earlier when we were talking about it, and I was like, oh, of course, okay. <laughs> I reckon. Have you yeah. seen uh, people take, like, kids' drawings? And oh, do, yeah, yeah, and yeah, go all yeah. realistic or rendered with them, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's really Those cool. The imagination is really awesome Definitely. to come up with something off of it. Oops. 
So in a few minutes, I think I would like to take a quick look at everybody's paintings. And then I am going to have to step away and go pack books as much as I hate to even. Ugh, well, yeah, I'm I, don't, gonna... I don't want to be sound ungrateful for all the book orders, but it's the holidays and I know that these folks want their books. So sure. Yeah. yeah try to get them out tomorrow. I'm going to have to call it myself here pretty quick. Me too. I'm yeah, old. I, <laughs> well, I have to go help with the kids, so I'm probably in the same place. Yeah. This has been a terrific session, though. Uh, yeah. Let's take a last look at everybody's stuff. All right. All right. All right. So, Sandy, so, that's really cool. Oh, thanks, old. She's with... like, an, like an alien elf mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. yeah, the color is a little dis... Uh, more bright over here it's a little more rainbowy but uh yeah it's funny it started off looking pretty weird and then i really i really enjoy her now so i'll have her other fin coming in and some more bubbles and yeah i'll definitely post it when it's all finished finished oh and she's gonna have scales definitely. oh yeah awesome very cool right. judy you're next on my little uh, uh -oh. here <laughs> okay um Let's see, how can I go so I can show? Let's see. Oh my gosh, I didn't get to see the Jeez, you got so much. Yeah. That's epic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. Did so much. And how long have we been on? Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, the iridescence uh, of the tail is so great. Oh, yeah. so cool. I'm going to use some iridescent paint on it too, because I like sparkling. Like <laughs> nice. Thank that's you. That's gorgeous. Oh, I love the beautiful. fish too. The the movement of the fish and the the shadows uh, the that shadows they're casting there. on her. Yeah, the really shadows cool. on her. Thanks very much. Epic. Thank right. you. Yeah. And then Leo, we've got you up here next. Try to move my. Try to manipulate this. I've been just working on this uh, tree branch. Wow. Out. The oh details on you. Beautiful. Yeah. Those vines. I love all the roots. Vines from last yeah, time. yeah. I heard I got all kinds of glare on there, but. Oh, a lot so of free cool. free zebra in there. Thank you. That's the kind of painting that if, if you're laying there getting tattooed and that's hanging in front of you, you're, you're entertained. Yeah. Yeah, yeah forever. <laughs> Certainly. Definitely. Beautiful. There's so much to look at. Thank you. Awesome. Really great. Really great. Uh, Guy, I've got you up next here. Okay. Yeah. Here oh, yeah. This thing. And uh, yeah, I think I'm so about cool. there with it. I might, uh, I might let it uh, dry and do a little bit of glazing over it. But uh, yeah, I think I'm about there. Really That's pretty. Cool. I like that oil. So wild. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I like the different. All right, Seth has got you up next here. All right, yeah. That's what we're working on. The oh, focus. Yeah, really nice. I thought that was smoke from the angle I was looking at it. Oh, and I never Very saw it. Very cool. Whole thing. Very yeah, scary. Yeah, we didn't get to see the bottom part. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's cool. not so many flowers down there too. Yeah, coming out of the ribs and. I'm still, I've been kind of at a loss with this one. I, I actually stopped on it for a while and I've been having a problem with the flowers, but just painting with y'all actually made it help me. So I think I need to add some up there, but. Yeah, you know, I'm I think the thing, with, the thing with those flowers is it could be that you're looking at them and you realize how much work you've got ahead of you, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, that's and really what that's, it is. And that's when you realize how big a two by three foot painting really is. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a back piece. Yeah. yeah. Each little flower is like Probably a, even a little bigger than that. Unto itself. Well, that's right. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This is awesome. It's a really cool. I, I'd love to do this more. Help me get awesome. more motivated to finish. <laughs> well, our next, paintings. our next scheduled uh, paint jam is going to be on the 20th, I think. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, with Nick Baxter. Oh yeah, next week. Yeah. Uh, next oh, next oh, Sunday. Oh, oh. That's on a Sunday. Sunday. We'll be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Melissa, I've got yours on here. 
Oh yeah. I'm trying to get some of the shine off of it so you guys can actually see. I'm not it. really seeing shine. Oh, cool. Yep, no, no, me neither. neither. It's really clear. Yeah. Awesome. So where where did you focus mostly tonight? Uh, so is that background. I did the, yeah, I did the lower part of the background, kind of masking mm -hmm. in the cliff that the castle's oh, on. Yeah. yeah. And then um, the beadwork on her forehead. Yeah, some detail work there. Very pretty. Very pretty. Yeah, I like the gem in the middle. Oh, really? Super cool. Oh, I like, I like the layers. Yeah. yeah. Just slowly layers. picking away at it. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that once it's all finished, Melissa. It's going to be a big, a big day. <laughs> right. right. It's, <laughs> it's going to be a pro probably one of your more detailed paintings, right? Uh, yeah, most de Well, I would say probably the one that I've spent the most time on <sighs> since I got back oh, into yes. painting. I know um, and I was never to see it when it's finished. Rain, Rain said that the last time we were, we were painting. Yeah, yeah. She started following me on on Instagram. I think probably just to kind of see where I'm at with it when I post it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, Tibon, we've got Tibon. Hi. Hey. <clears throat> I wasn't quiet. sure if you, you guys had missed me. Weird internet connection right now, and it's like a twenty second delay. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm still waiting for it to pop on. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. Nope. Yeah, I'm not even. Oh, there we go. Yeah, let's yeah. See. Going it's a little on pixelated, uh, unfortunately, pretty, because yeah. of your connection. But I love their uh, their gestures, and I like how they uh, fall it's back great. in space like that. Mm -hmm. I like how much depth it has. Boy, oh, that changed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a scribble. <laughs> Let's see, what, cool. see what it turns into. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. cool. A little blurry. Sweet. I like the back, the one in the background with the silhouettes. It adds a lot. Awesome. Yeah, I might actually even uh, rare this some more so I get a better idea of it and then actually put it onto a canvas. Oh, wow. Paint it. Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> what did you, yeah, what did you do that on? On your, on your iPad or what? What's it on? Oh, uh, Photoshop. Oh, you're doing it yeah. digital. I wonder it yeah. looks pixelated. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it. I don't. I think it's not actually that pixelated. I think that uh, his connection is uh, a little slow, and so we're we're getting a um, a fraction kind of a web pixelated version. Yeah. Yeah, I know m the picture for me. Picture for me is like twenty second delay for sure, and mm. then uh, the audio. The audio has been cutting in and out. So. <clears throat> uh, well, oh, we look forward to seeing this posted, so we can really check it out. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely post yeah, it. Is yeah, there some special uh, hashtag that we should use, guy? Do you think, or maybe um, let's let's say, um, hmm. Well, I mean, we, you normally we use the, the real yeah. RTT Mermaid. What do you think? Well, we usually use the RIT uh, initials, oh. RIT Mermaid. Should we just do RIT Mermaid? Sounds do good. I don't think that would be something that's already there, so that makes it so it's just us on the okay. hashtag, which is nice. Yep, yep. All right. Cool. Let's do that. And so I'm going to be posting mine maybe right after we get off because I'm signing it right now. So nice. I think I can do that. And so I'll put that hashtag on there. And I know, I know that. I got oh. these um, really neat um, acrylic pens. Oh, yes. Are they Posca's? Um, um, these are called our, uh, tool art, and they are so nice for writing your name. They yeah. make it look like you really have control. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, now we just need an oil version of that. I'm sure, you know what, <laughs> uh, the thing about paint pens is sometimes you can just put whatever you want in them. And they might not work very long, but they might work long enough to like get the job done. Oh, interesting. Uh, wow, is that other skull a painting as well? What's that? This one. 
the other Seth is that that other painting a skull of a skull is yes. that a painting or is it a reference? It's it's an oil painting. The the this one right here. <laughs> this is where the twenty second <laughs> delay comes in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's it. It, looked, uh, it was just the just the head. Yeah, that's the, a painting. Yes, wow. that's the whole painting I've been working on. That's that's really I awesome. I do a lot of oil paintings. Uh, well, not a lot, but most of the ones I do are of skulls. This is another one I did. We should have. I can't see it. How come mm. I can't see it? Yeah, oh, we're still sorry, stuck yeah. on Javon's. I I think that that. Uh, that long internet delay uh, that he's experiencing. Oh, is... There we go. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Nice. Very I love cool. that crop. Cool. Oh, That's nice. very cool. Oh man, that makes me want to paint some more skulls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I we should do I... a skull session. Okay, we'll do a skull session. Maybe that's. Uh, <laughs> I would uh... love to be a part of that one. Yeah. Is... Well. We'll put that on our, our, it'll probably be in our January wish list. Uh, yeah. Because I, uh, I think this month is already pretty booked. But yeah, next thing next week is he's going to do a landscape. I think. Uh, yeah, I want to. Is that, is that going to be similar to the, the way y'all did this? Yeah. Where uh, uh, I would like to be a part of that. I, I love Nick Baxter's work. And, well, okay. I think he's going to, you know, he's going to give people the option of using their own reference or doing whatever they want, but he's also going to provide reference. And so if you wanted to actually just work along and uh, use the specific material list that he's going to be providing and all that, you'll have that option. So like what we did tonight was we just kind of did our own thing and we had sort of a loose theme for people that wanted a theme. But in that case, you'll have the option of actually following along if you want to. Yeah, I'll start with a new canvas or something new and try to work with him. Uh, I, I see all, he's he's close to me and also I've got the, I had the opportunity to watch him tattoo a few times, which is really cool to see and uh, talk to him a few different times. But yeah, I've looked. Let me see his, that his work up there. That's really Is there good. a theme for Nick Baxter's? I love that one. Landscape. Thank you. Landscape. Yeah, Nick oh, is going to do a landscape and uh, <sighs> maybe focused on the sky. I'm not sure hmm. yet. We've we've talked about it a bit, but he's still narrowing it down. He posted one earlier. It looked like I wanted to call it like a copper sky. It was like a nice blue sky with like orangish clouds. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. You know another That's another uh, artist that I meant to mention, Matthew Cornell. And he's somebody that I actually found through Nick. He's a, not, he does landscapes, but also he paints just like a house on a country road with really nice lighting, right? He's, he's a lighting guy. But yeah, he just today posted a beautiful sky painting. Cool. Matthew Cornell. Good right. I can uh, and this will be next Sunday as well. Yeah, yep. next Sunday is going to be uh, Nick's paint jam. So yeah, we, we actually have a big week. Is that um, one open to the public? Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. The, in general, the paint jams are all open to the public. Cool. Uh, and then the, the Monday night things are, are mostly for subscribers only, although we uh, opened up the Andre Malcolm thing because, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted Andre to have a, a big audience. And plus, you know, we want to introduce people to what we're doing here. But yeah, yeah so tomorrow we've got uh, uh, our next elemental flow exercise since we've been uh doing that and this time we're going to be doing atmospheric turbulence and i'll have some references that we're going to use and simplify into our own hand uh and then on tuesday uh i'm doing two interviews the first one in the morning will be with uh tommy lee wentner uh from germany uh germany is shut down right now so we're trying to you know invite some european tattooers on for interviews and then in the evening, uh, I'll be talking with Russ Abbott, and we're going to be focusing on uh, digital drawing tools since he sells a bunch of stuff that's aimed at tattooers uh, through his Tattoo Smart website. So he's going to have uh, some of the artists that have made tools for him, such as Damon Conklin, come on and demo some of that stuff. So this is that's going to be really cool. 
Uh, so that's all uh, Tuesday. So yeah, that's that's three things already. And I know that Gabe and Sandy have got other stuff planned throughout the week. Uh, Sandy, can you remember some of it? Yep. So uh, tomorrow morning, there's the uh, morning drawing session. Oh yeah, uh, Jake, Jake makes drawing Jake. session. Yeah. Um, and then uh, right after, not right after that, but at noon, uh, there's going to be Let's Talk Tattoo, where Mark uh, from Needle Jig talks to Renee Little. Oh. Um, so that's three things just tomorrow. <laughs> and then uh, on Wednesday, there's going to be Live at the Castro, where um, Haley Adams and Jess Koala interview Leslie Ma, who is uh, a, a queer punk rocker from a band called Tribe 8 in the 90s. Um, so they're interviewing her. It sounds like it's going to be really funky. And then on Thursday, there's the Tattoo Collecting Podcast with Chuck Beasy, who's like a mega collector. He's going to be talking to Fawn Baker and Jordan Ruckus. And then on the 20th, before the paint jam with Nick, there's going to be at 1 p.m., there's another drawing group with uh, another reinventing member, Jake Leeser. Oh, Jason Leeser, right, right, right. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, wow. lots of stuff this week. And uh, we now have the app can now be found in the app store. If you want the latest version, just search reinventing the tattoo at the app store and install it. It's free. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great session. Uh, man, I'm going to go pack some books. It's been great hanging out with you all. The re app is out now. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Right? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> On the app store. Um. Still. Still. Uh. Got some little things to be tweaked out, but um. It's nice and smooth. It's functional. It just some of the buttons are still just gray squares and you know stuff like yeah. that. But we're <laughs> we're just three of us, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's good. Anyway, thank you all. Uh, and Sandy, thanks for hosting. Apple Store. Uh, yep. yep, you can find it at the Apple App Store. Yeah. And Judy, thank you so much for uh, being part of this. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank Thanks you, Judy.